Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tino you know, that there are last days of Europe in which we got quite a few things to talk about. Ah, oh, but you know what? The traders return. When it became clear that the Japanese had established a North China political council in the northern lands of the Nanjing government, some MPA staffers winced and many more snarled in anger. Long Yun. And those around him remember how vile the provisional government the NCPC's predecessor had been. That heck hole had been filled to the brim with a whole lot of Han Jian collaborators, even worse than Wang Jingwei and his followers. Whereas Wang's lot tried to make it seem like they were on their own country, the dudes of the NCPC didn't even show the slightest hesitation in choosing to betray the nation that bore them. To the British imperialist Japanese Empire, the NCPC were their loyal subordinates in China. To the true sons of China, such as those assembled in Long Yun's command tent, they were the worst traitors of all of Chinese history, worse than even the Wang and Gao put together. Hence why so many NPA officers snarled at the news, but the NPA restrained itself. They had not made it past Chongqing into the Yi and Zheng like so many clones of Zheng Fei. For now, it was decided that the NPA forces would remain outside of the NCPC-held land to do otherwise for all, after all. It would just lead to full-scale war in the form of a Japanese intervention to protect the de jure puppet state, which was something that everyone in the NPA knew they couldn't afford. It was decided then that the NPA would instead follow the footsteps of the former National Revolutionary Army and secure the South first, before marching towards the long-lost northern lands. While well, they found it strange that Gao did not still not call for Japan's intervention despite the severity of the situation, they cared not. It suited them perfectly. Whether it was born out of overconfidence or foolishness did not matter, for Gao would soon be given cause to regret his hostility towards the righteous forces of the NPA. Uh, oh, and also, off-screen, like, I've been doing this a little bit more, but we already got, uh, Jing Clique. Oh, oh, no, Jing Clique still remains independent. Actually, we need to do them next. We have, uh, Zikang Clique, like last time. We got Guangxi Clique. We got the Shangxi Clique. The Ma Clique. So we'll talk about Shang the Shangxi joins the National Liberation Front to the most esteemed, most honorable General Long across the Yangtze, the Yellow River, from the basins of Sichuan to the lowest plateau. Your rallying cries have been heard. It is my utmost jubilation, therefore, to have I deliver my assurances that the brave people of Shangxi and Shangxi stand together with you. Indeed, I think both of us and hundreds of other like-minded warriors scattered across China as well are victims of circumstance, our dignity forcibly surrendered to alien bandits and savages. Our names forever tainted by humiliation. How I long for taking up arms in the name of justice once more, and for my salvation from this gilded cage I had wrought myself into. Yet trapped I remained woefully, day after day, by the windows of the governor's office, I stood pondering what could have been and thirsting for even one strand of sunlight that was. Until the news of your triumph reached my ears, and light caressed my face once more, indeed. Heavenly justice favors the righteous and the noble, and unites them under one banner. Rest assured, General Long, as of writing this letter, I have severed all contact with the false Nanjing regime. It will hardly be another 24 hours before the drums of war start beating again. Perhaps by the time every inch of soil between Guizhou and Shangxi have been recovered, you would mind that I make your personal acquaintance. To peace and liberation, Fu Zioyi, governor of Shangxi and Shangxi. Welcome, it's never too late, and the National Protection Army comes to Maklik. Bai Li appreciated little of what the National Protection Army had brought with them. The trucks handled strangely, the uniforms blended in poorly with the arid hills of Nangsu, and the new next to nothing about the environment. Even their accent was more than queer. And yet, seeing them fill in amongst his own soldiers brought him an immense hope that he hadn't felt in years. He sat comfortably overlooking a small detachment of recruits in the midst of the training, the harsh voice of the Yunnanese officer cracking like a whip. These southerners certainly have somewhat of a ferocity about them, but I fear Tsuji and his Imperial Army units will force them to keep their heads down for the time being. That'll matter none when they ride out. Tsuji won't stand a chance against both our forces and Long Yun's detachment. The officers beside him boasted. I've heard about how these men fought during the Chinese people's resistance. They can appear everywhere, anywhere, and slink back away just as quickly. They are well versed in all forms of warfare, hand-to-hand -hand combat, using rifles, you name it. I wouldn't be surprised if they could fire artillery pieces. Bai Li was prone to agreeing, but for now kept his thoughts to himself. The time will come, General, the officer continued. He seemed lost in his own world of gr glory and battle, a dumb grin etched across his face, stretching from cheekbone to cheekbone. The United Front will come about once more. The Japanese will run in fear at the cracks of our rifles and the sound of our marches. Later, as Bai Li dozed off to bed, he couldn't help but think about his officer's words. What he wouldn't give for that thought to become a reality. Perhaps it will come to pass some day when the mad dog is leashed or unleashed along with the sun. The last resistance sun shall respond to our call and join the crusade under heaven. Relentless order assaults, holy crap. That's way more supply consumption. We want to remove our soldiers who suffer from exhaustion, hampering morale? Eh, I think we're pretty good. Under heaven. Jing Jingguo had always seen himself as a city dweller. But when he came to live with the Ma's, the star set of sky finally had become a daily marvel. The Milky Way flowed out to all horizons, with nebulas spreading like dust among the brilliance of the stars. The moon run and bright held itself among the celestial beings. Reflecting the sun's dignity on its face, Jing sat himself on the cold desert sands and watched the mysteries of the universe unfold before his eyes. A case of cold rice wine was next to him, and from time to time he would take swigs of it. 
The alcohol burned its way through Jing's chest. Good drink for stargazing. He was doing field work again, and this time he went deep west, deeper in the desert, rather than east. Where the dunes had sagged under the curtain of a simmering air, now they stood like mountains. Graves to mark where civilization had risen and fallen, Jiang blinked. China had stood for thousands of years. Although it would last for a thousand years more, and one day he and the millions that would compromise a stolid, respectable people would all turn to dust with mounds of sand being all that remained, an unmarked grave for a forgotten nation. He chuckled. It's like become a philosophical drunk, he thought. Jiang turned his mind to more practical matters, and the Southwest Rebellion was a full swing. Caught between advising caution and his own desire to join the insurrection, he nevertheless became adamant in his insistence to wait and see. Ma Zhu Yuan and the rest of his family were impatient by the loyalty to the Generalissimo and his family triumphed over everything else. The Miles would stay there, say, stay their hand and wait. Soon he would be called to do his duty as a son and brother. Slightly drunk, he would rather not think of it all as Jiang stood and walked to his tent. Meanwhile, the stars looked new, or stars looked below, indifferent to the affairs of men. But we do have a few comments to go through, like normal. Such as, uh, someone says, based. Someone, uh, someone else says, I guess you could say, it's a long march to Nanjing. Someone says gaming, another person says, when Nanjing falls, the Japanese will intervene, which I did remember. Yes, they do. Yes, they will. Someone says, try to get Shang-Chi on your side. We already did. Someone says, no one can stop Long Yun. No one can stop these nuts. So, and a couple other people said, this is so cool, and gamer time. So, um, I did complete one focus over here, round up the foreigners. So, the presence of foreigners in China is nothing new. We have known and borne them for centuries. On their own, though, they represent the remnants of the oppression we were forced to endure. They are harmless, and we will not sink to the level of our foes ruthlessly committing atrocity against innocent civilians. With that being said, their history also does not permit them to walk as freely as the Chinese that rise, liberated by our movement. Many were formerly in positions of exploitation, the memories of which burn painfully in the minds of our people. And they could still have ties with the parasitic network that was used to divide and dominate us. The best solution is to put them under observation, if possible. Gather them where they can be easily watched and prevented from contacting the former overlords. Ensure both their safety and ours. Last chance divisions. Among those we have replaced under a watchful eye claim that they came here either not as their free will, from the free will, or with positive intentions. They include workers, some of them who are not Japanese, hailing from all corners of the sphere, journalists who came apparently seeking truth, and other such blameless individuals. There's potentially some merit in the claims, and we would be remiss to tar them with all the same dark brush as the rest of the uh, interned. <clears throat> As movement fights for and with those who wish to live in this land under their own law. There's only one way to truly see if the foreigners' intentions are as pure as they say. Give them the opportunity to fight and bleed for the movement, as the rest of us do. We'll give them the last chance denied to so many of our brothers and sisters, now departed from this earth with the crack of a Japanese bullet. Let them fight to prove their worth. And push Japan into the sea? We'll get there once we get there with the Japanese, so... However, wherever, whoever... Any fool can inherit wealth, sadly the greatest fools of them all. The ineffective reorganized government inherited most of our rightful wealth in terms of population and industrial centers. We, in comparison, are completely lackluster. To be these collaborator enemies in the field, a mass conscription campaign shall commence. No leader wants to see their people suffer, especially long union, but our enemies believe us no choice. No sacrifice is intolerable while our nation suffers. As economy, still doing better. Also, we did get to widespread cronyism from dysfunctional high command, which we didn't get that many benefits. Actually, we ended up l losing... Or technically gaining more supply consumption, which is really bad. So, that was very good. So, regardless, yeah, it's a, you're at a plus. So, there's that. And right now, what our goal is, is make more instruments. And circle, and circle, and circle, and circle, and circle, and circle. Actually, do you have any field marshal like, general traits? Look at that lag. I mean, you can select a preferred tactic for this character. Well, the game is now frozen because I selected something. And there we go. Oh, we actually do have preferred tactics. Okay. Overwhelming attack and delay. Um, oh no, is this thing... Uh, do we have any other tactics here? Well-planned attack. Ultration assault. Eh, we'll see. Actually, you know what? Since we have it, it's only one general. Screw it. Let's do it. Overwhelming. Nice. The goal is to encircle, encircle, encircle. Like someone said, and I did have that already in the back of my head, or the back of my mind, um, that we have to not non take Nanjing before we are truly ready, because then we have to fight the entire sphere, for, I think, for the most part. So, Just lots and lots of encirclements. The National Protection Army comes to Xinjiang. The journey to Xinjiang has done a number on Qiong's men. Between the failing truck engines, the increasing heat of the region, and the mountainous terrain, it was little wonder that Qiong didn't have the men to turn back around to, to Yunnan. Finally, he made it to the border. With all his men in almost all of his trucks, Adam traveled more than an hour until what counted as a border patrol came across them. A little more than ten men spread out across five motorcycles. 
Are you with the Imperial Japanese Army? The one that Kyung took before the officer called out. A guy out of the front of his truck had slowly made his way toward him. His voice was dry enough as it was without having a shout. The water ration was given, about, given out about a day ago, but being so close to the border, he forced his men to continue onwards. My name is Kyung Lee. I represent the National Protection Army. My men are here to join Jing Jing's army to fight among them and serve our collective cause. He scratched the back of his head. I have the documents in the truck, but right now a drink of water would suit me better. Kyung found himself sitting in front of the near, nearest army representative in Jing Jing. Commander Azu. Fortunately, he had a cool jug of water located at the front of his desk. Kyung told him about his mission, the journey he had embarked on to get here, and his hopes for the cooperation. When he was done, Arzu began. Many of the, my colleagues have awaited this day, and so have I. While the Imperial Army detachment in the area is certainly an issue, your aid should prove more than enough to repel them once more. I shall send word of your arrival, but I can already assure you, you and your men will find a home in our nation. The bells of freedom toll throughout the homeland. Oh, as they should. 67, 68. Okay. There's definitely going to be a struggle bus here. There's only two divisions here, but that's okay. Especially since uh, China has to deal with these other guys, too. Oh, this is all demilitarized, isn't it? So it's just us fighting them, that's not bad. If we can get here, that'd be great. That's all I want. I just want to get here. Just one more tile. Because I do force the attack sometimes, so. Let's do right there, that's fine. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Hold for now. Should hold, hold. As I'm training the other garrisons south of us, just, just in case. Just hang out, just hang out and hold. They want to attack us, that's fine. Just take your time. We don't we, need, we don't need a rush. We're doing quite well because we already have really really good legitimacy. Tibet remains neutral. Well, wait, what? The poor was nothing unexpected. Long Yun thought they rejected all of our requests. The diplomat seat in front of him sadly not. The Tibetans labeled themselves unjust demands and categorically refused to meet with any of our representatives again. Even every Tibetan within the government gave the same answers and to my colleagues in Tibet at the same time. They'd rather keep their head in the sand than aid the countrymen in their struggle. So be it. I have no use for a mountain hollowed out hundreds of kilometers away. Don't bother them further, Dai. You have done more than enough. Their help would have been minuscule at best. That would be all. Yoon thought to the sound of his employees' shoes clacking away at the tile floor. Gazing out of his office windows, he did so. His capital was a beautiful place, chugging away as life flowed through it. He spotted lorries, trucks, and even a few cars navigating the many streets, people dining out of the many restaurants located around the cities. He fought for them, not for any Tibetan further away than Long Yoon even cared to imagine. Let them keep their independence for now. They shall face the reality when time comes. He muttered, lighting up cigarette. Or maybe a cigar. There's no scraps in my scrapbook. We don't need any change of momentum, momentum text, so. We're doing quite well, I'd say. Mutual is fine with me. Last chance divisions, not bad, not bad. Just not great. There you go. Over here, no, not really. And then, however, whoever, wherever. Everything for the war. Great shame comes to Long Yun from a rem remembrance of how the Chinese people acted against the Japanese in the war that destroyed our nation. When the majority of the nation faltered and flatlined and the arch enemies marched themselves in Yunnan, Yun caved to protect his people. Finally, this shame can be rectified. The leaderless Chinese resistance must be restored and the ember shall climb to tall once more. Freedom is the highest expression of the human will, and the struggle to attain it gives it life meaning. At long last, Long Yun has seen sense in this ancient wisdom. Further mobilization sounds fun to me. If anything... I want to get more organization first. Let these guys move around. I want them to be stabilized first because we got one, two, three. I'm thinking about going to Zhang Yang first, maybe. We actually might be able to attack here as well, but we'll see. Money is not bad. I got enough guns and artillery for now. I was trying to convert a couple divisions here too, so let them all move about and around. Because I, I definitely want to attack here first, but they have to walk over river, so it's fine. Well plan attack. It's fine. Let these guys move, and then we'll attack here, too. All three divisions out, take here. And that is that a supply hub? No, we got to start thinking about that. Wuhan is a supply hub. Chengde is good as well. Oh, it's four divisions there. It's so nice. Oh, they have five divisions. They're still moving. They're still moving. It's fine. We got to let them spread out. All right. They're looking weak. Go ahead. Let us begin anew to recover our old nation. Huang Zhijiang had been conscripted several weeks ago to work at one of the few weapons manufacturers that existed in Yunnan. And he loved it. At first he had been afraid. He had been heard horror stories about how the Nanjing traders, the Guangdong money grubbers, and the Japanese and Pearls dudes conscripted random peasants to slave away in the factories and worked them to death without concern for their welfare. Of course, Huang reflected, he should have known that his own people would treat him as a darn sight better. 
The work was brutal, but not unbearably so. Soldiers frequently came by every several hours or so to help with the manufacturing or to offer up necessary supplies. They had been sent by orders of people he did not know. General Zhang, Marshal Yi, and the National Southwestern University, the Grand General, were the sort of names he heard when crates of cooked food or boxes of supplies were unloaded. No matter what the workers were doing, their motions were the same, Huang noticed. Whether they were playing mahjong during the break, eating a rare preparation of freshly cooked food sent as a special gift from a grateful military official, or working away at sending what guns and bullets they could send to the front lines. The atmosphere was thick with fear, excitement, and patriotism, revanchism, and bloodlust. Huang felt no shame in joining his fellows in that mindset. As Huang did his best part, or small part, to help bring the Japanese dudes down, he realized he had never felt more alive in his life. Nothing like a cause to give somebody purpose. And technically, we'll read this one too, just because we probably need to... Well, we'll, we'll do this one eventually. In ancient times, at Heaven's Command, the Empire of Japan arose from the Azure Sea. Now, along Union's Command, we shall return the Japanese to the inky depths from whence they were called. A human wave of loyal Chinese shall wash over them, let them try and flee, let them try and fight. We shall find them, fight them, and bring them to heavenly justice. Every Hindu model, every portrait, destroy. Japan is a cancer which has invaded our body. It's a weed in our garden. We must destroy it to the last iota, to the last speck of dust, or those demons will ravage our soil again just as they did an eternity ago. China will be whole. China will be free. China will be born anew, finally untainted from the filthy stain of Nippon or any other alien overlord. Smash them, burn them, drive them to the sea. For what other choice do we have? All right, everyone. So we just took out. I just took out off screen of these soldiers that were in here. Uh, casualties, actually. We have suffered a couple casualties. We really delivered a lot of casualties to China, but then again, this of course is this is still China, so uh, it's kind of expected for them to take a lot of casualties, especially when they have quite a, a wide front now, which is kind of nice. If anything, one, two, three, four, circling three divisions on there would be really good. But do I want to move all my divisions down there? That's the real question. Or do I want to go like? One, two, three, four. There's still four divisions that can get encircled there, so maybe we'll go something like this. Can we actually move through here? We should be able to, right? Right? These guys are going crazy, and I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. We can always take their divisions later, especially to help let's like guard the... Oh, garrison and whatnot. Oh. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. That's, that's worth a try. Because if not, we can go there and go here and then circle that. So, uh, better to attack now than later, just because they got a lot of guys down here too. Oh, send more guys through there too. Thank you very much. At this point, I think we're doing quite well. Now, of course, then again, the sphere still needs to be called in, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, so far this has been a lot easier than I imagined it would be, but like I said, it's not over yet. Oh, oh, okay. And I thought the demilitarized zone was over. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a weak one to do, especially fighting over the river is not easy, but... Ooh, maybe so do well here. Oh, they can... Oh, supply loss is really good to see. Or at least attrition. Attrition. Supply loss. It's attrition, Mr. Milk Lover. It's attrition. Yeah. Fighting over the river is not good. Of course, we could force the attack, but they keep... They're not throwing any more divisions in. And... Go. Force it. Oh, they're throwing, not, not throwing more divisions in. God dang it. Yeah, maybe it was a mistake to do that. Oh. Fifth Commonwealth, huh? How much attrition are they taking? Only 1%, that's not much. Yeah, just hold in. My bad. Yeah, we shouldn't force the attack. Three days left. No, yeah, actually. I yeah, might be able to do it, maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Go right there. Go right there. A1, A2. Gonna drop down to the 80s again. I will throw another division in here too, but four. Because that division is actually pretty good. Yeah, they have a very strong division. That could be 30 combo with. Throw them back in. 93, 94. I don't want to force the attack again, but... I think we'll break it when we do it again. 5... 6... 7... 
Chen Da King. And it's a very costly way to do this, but come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, come on. That's so unfair. And I don't want to just, just have a general push. That's That would not be good. There we go, finally. So I don't think they're really trapped. Yeah, they're not really trapped, so. Can you actually move to here, though? No, you can't. God dang it, that's dumb. So basically, we're going to take everything up to Nanjing. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I didn't know that. If we had some fast divisions, I'd just like move all the way down here, take the Fuzuo, but huh. That sucks. Well, I guess in the meantime, I guess clear these guys out, I guess. Nice. More divisions are good. Goodbye, Africa. Goodbye. Any of this stuff? Uh, not really. Honestly, you don't really need that. Ooh, morale's going... Oh, it's already 60. Morale cap is 60, so... It's fine. Not bad, not bad. Of course, we can still use the whole GUI thing. Is there anything we can do about that with this? Estimated officers... No admin efficiency. Oh, you just create divisions that way. Oh. Spend money, get more military. I get another military base. Infrastructure's not bad. Increase GDP? Oh. Okay. Of course, you can click on all this stuff, so. Um, this is very looks all very complicated. War measures. Oh, because it's very high right now. Aligned. Admin efficiency. So, yeah. Garrisons. Uh, militarizing the state's not easy. No. Cool. Well, whatever. There you go. Beat the snow out of them if you can. This guy should be learning a lot. Song? Yeah. Oh, this is the militarist. Okay, so we still did encircle them. Okay, that's pretty good. Of course, they're at war. No one can. Oh, maybe not. Oh, how do we delete one division there then? Wait, what's going on? Oh, no, they, they. Some of them are dying. Okay, then. Well, I guess they did die. I'm okay with that. Hmm. So maybe what we should do. We want to take Wuhan. Ding dong dong. So maybe we should go bing bong bing. Does sing song ching. That could work. Because they're, what's their cap? 80? Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's a lot of, oh, that's a lot of divisions there, though. Did they know that we were going to go there? Hmm. We still try it. I mean, it might be really hard. They don't have a little, oh, it's not bad. Some of those divisions are really good, though. But I still want to convert some of these guys over, too. So you guys, become, uh, no. Best inf. Might as well try it. Because the supplies are really not looking bad at all. We're looking pretty darn... We're doing good, actually. Three, two, one. We'll try it. All but one going here, too. Try it. You kind of think that England would probably be able to defeat Wales. You'd at least imagine so, right? Right. Not bad. 
and immediately move that direction too. Got quite a few divisions here, don't they? Oh, and, oh, another increase in admin efficiency. Great. We live in the managerial age after all. Now, this one's going to be really good for us too, right? Of course. A streamlined bureaucracy, more political power, group population factor, less supply consumption, stability. All sorts of good stuff. Oh, so nice. Hopefully this just shoots up more. Wow, look at that up point and then down almost a curve at the bottom. Very cool. Nice. Maybe you can, like, ooh... Yeah, just stay there for now. Protecting Wuhan is going to be the thing we need. Ooh. And they're going to attack us first. That's fine. Whatever. It's four divisions. I don't want to fight over River just yet. You know what? I'm going to try to make this a big encirclement. We're going to do Wuhan. Go all the way down to maybe Yi Chun. Maybe go all the way down here. I want their entire front line trapped. That's what my goal is. Ooh, what's the freaking attrition, aren't we? Or maybe just push this way. Stupid idea, but we could try it. Supply loss is going to be kind of large, but that's okay. Oh, you know what? We do have some roads. I hope we build some railroads. Ooh, railways are pretty far away, though. Yeah, that's probably going to take a while to do. Or not. Or not at all. Nice. Thin out our line, maybe they'll start attacking us a little bit more. Oh, we can just go down here to here. We'll see. Give ourselves a couple options. Actually, we're fair. Oh, 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 that's not bad. Construction wise, it's almost done. Wow. At least for this, this small one little province. Um, you could try. They have a lot of a bad attrition right here. It might not go very well. Maybe not. It might be a bit too much. Yeah, it's a bit too much. They have 18 divisions. Are you kidding me, bro? Go here. 49, 47. Yeah, this one was a bit... Eh. A bit too much. All right, that's fine. Do I still have? Is this still? De it's not demilitarized. Oh, can this? Oh, they're moving in. Oh my good. Oh, okay then. What if we were to instead just say, "Hey, Hangzhou, let's go." What if we were to say, let's go crazy, and completely try to encircle them and whatnot? Oh, we can't do that. God dang it. Oh, we were close. Yeah, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. What happened to the demilitarized zone? Why did it stay not demilitarized? Because I don't mind moving you guys out, actually. Move them out to... the supply hubs? Because supply hubs are just so important. Maybe right here. You know what? We'll circle Wuhan. I hear sometimes I got labs. I want those labs. We're doing August 3rd, nice. But hey, look at that GDP. That's so wow. I didn't even realize that how big that's oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I just I just want to take my time with this. I think we just really need to take our time and not rush. I don't think there's a thing where Japan says, no, kill them off or they go to war, whatever, so. Uh, one more daily army XP, but we'll see. Get the soldiers out, which would reduce supply consumption. Of course, they don't get any supplies in here anyways, because it's so bad, but still. But stills. A lot of months is not bad. Eh, that's not too bad. Good. I can't believe it's still demilitarized like that. 
Yeah, let them attack us. Let them attack us. I will gladly have them attack us. Alright, guys, over there, because... You know what? Just go in, go in here. It's fine. Because these guys are 27 combo with the big boys. Ooh, they threw in a few more divisions, huh? Not enough to stop us. So then we'll have the supply consumption. Supply consumption? Supply theory too. Which will be fit not met no. Oh, they actually stopped us, huh? Let's see about that. Especially when we force the attack. Songs divisions go nuts. Supply stats is going up, average organization is going down. We have enough supplies that we can do this several times. We got plenty of guns, motorized, support equipment. We should get some signal companies too. Or something else, maybe we'll see. And there you go, we got more supply. Going getting to is that demilitarized two here? It doesn't look like it is. So we'll get up to this tile here, that'd be cool. Good, 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 good. Getting that tile too would be very nice. It's part of the rail lines up here, nice. So you guys are gonna start going like this. Follow the rails, follow the rails. To here, to here, that'll be good. Because after that, after we if we can circle all these guys, the rest of the channel is gonna fall very easily. Give us a little bit of time. Not oh, too bad. Why do you want to remain independent, man? Oh, do you have something other upgrade here? Go with that one for now. But I think I'll do it just a little bit more off screen, just because it's just gonna be encirclement, encirclement, encirclement until we get until the next point where Nanjing will probably be falling. All right, everyone. So we're not quite there, in Nanjing yet, but I have taken Wuhan, which is great, and we have quite an encirclement here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen divisions, and we also have this decision too. Capturing the old arsenal, of China, the city of Wuhan, will grant us access to more badly needed equipment for army. We'll cripple the thrice darned traders. At the same time, we should push east and secure the west bank of the Gangjian River, further securing our presence in the area. Which is great. Hopefully that this doesn't raise a cap, unfortunately, I think, but getting these guys done would be great. Because these guys, this, this is actually not easy to get. This was a pain in the butt. Also, I did tap over to see how much how China was doing. They, they still have equipment, but they are like negative 38 power grid, so they can't make anything right now, which is great to see. But yeah, there's a lot of divisions strapped in here. And uh, I've been forcing the attack quite a bit. Yeah, it's kind of going crazy here, but sometimes you have to go crazy. After this, we're going to have a general push. We're going to push hard into the rest of China. Because I just don't think they can muster up any more defenses, really. So, uh, You guys are 15 combo with, which is fine. Um, where are you guys at? Yeah, you, you were really getting devastated here. So, We got enough equipment so far. We got enough manpower. I mean, overall... We might need a little bit more artillery soon in the future, but once Japan gets involved, um, we will really have to deploy a lot of these guys here too. Ooh, the Japanese are still down here. Look at that. Ooh, that's not good. So, we'll see about that. Move on in if you can. Um, Cope our spirits. Oh, shh. Nikes. It's not good. Um, National Liberation Front, of course. There's us here, too. But then again, we have a lot of our allies here as well. So, if anything, I want to grab you guys, too. At the very least, let's grab you all, maybe. Mm. At least finish this area up first. You guys are not done yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, Maturia's joined, huh? Uh-oh. Time to move in? It's time to move in. They called in their allies. I didn't call in our allies yet, but we'll see. Okay, so now they're fi war with us, too. And now, okay, now we're fighting Japan. Okay, that's weird. Oh crap, they got a lot of tanks too, huh? 
Well, that's not good. Go, 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 go. Force it. Go in. So we don't even have to take Nanjing, because now we get there. And we'll also do this one as well. Uh, production units. We need way more equipment, so we'll get at least two right there. China's got to fall. Wow, they got a lot of tanks, don't they? Oh, that's not going to be good. Are you wars well? Not yeah, you will be wars soon. Ooh. We might have just auto deploy and rush these divisions out right now. Just in case. Because we're surrounded on all sides here, so you. One, two. Something like that, maybe? We'll see. Alright, so you guys did well here. It was good. Um, yeah. I think we might be able to do well here, maybe? Hopefully. Nanchang. Guangdong has been called in, god dang it. Push Japan to the sea. We'll see what happens. If we do well, we, we will. And then if we don't, we don't. So, Oh, it's going to be a pain in the butt. You know what? You might as well just come over here and do this too. Full front line? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, wow. Go in if you can, especially in central China here. We gotta go in. You three. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Alright. Need some resources still? Happy 968, everybody. Yeah, just make sure we get whatever we, whatever we need. Ooh, go right there. If you can, circle them, please do so. You guys were never told there is that one. How are we losing here? How much anti-tank do we actually have? Uh, we have enough that we could probably throw some more on our best divisions, at least. Basic infantry. We can throw some engineers on those guys. Yeah. That's fine. Signal companies, that wouldn't be bad. We're gonna need some more anti tank, in all honesty. Right, I'll just leave it like that for now. Yeah, attacking. Getting attacked by Japan is gonna be a pain in the butt. We can't do anything against them. And our guys are just not moving out. Oh, that's not good. I mean, I have to do some funky stuff off screen, then so be it, whatever. But I'd rather not have to do that, please. I thought we'd go all the way to Nanjing and do that, but. I mean, agent turned. So the front is giving me a lot of uh, concern, though. Just hold out. That's all I want you to do is hold out. They should be taking way more attrition than that. And this should devastate the economy of Japan, right? In theory, right? If anything... Oh. Momentum's still fine. It's still fine. I want more attack. I want more defense. I don't think we'll get. Guys, you gotta move around. Good. How much armor do they have? A lot. That's very good. Not good. 
I'm kind of surprised we don't get any help from, like, America or anything like that. Just because, like, you think they would help us out fighting against the Japanese, but I guess not. At this point, just go ahead and do this, too. Delay. Oh, crap, we got in circle, too? Bro, no. Bro, no. Bro, no. What the heck? Dude, why are you taking territory away from us? No, we lost the division. Oh, come on, man. That's so stupid. That's so dumb. Yeah, that's why I did not want to play this. It's so it's not easy. It's so not easy. They made another encirclement? Oh come on. How many divisions does Japan have? How can Japan for this many divisions with their economy and like still trying to recover? They're doing definitely di well down here, so it's not like a complete loss yet. This game uh best end. How are we losing? How the hell are we losing? Hold. Hold the line. Grind up against him. Don't worry about that one. Just hold, 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 hold. Because we got divisions over here too. We got to... Oh my god. It's completely... Ugh. Uh, I hate this so much. We can't do anything. Yeah, I, I I hate this so much. Give me. Yeah, I don't know. I think we've lost. I, I don't know if we can do anything. This is stupid. I hate this so much. We just don't have enough division for anything here. God damn it. You just don't have enough anything. Because why why, why did our allies just leave it completely wide open? I don't understand. We're gonna deploy soldiers early if we can, but this is so stupid. If anything, this should destroy the Japanese economy. We're mobilizing for war? Are you kidding me? Come on, yeah, I'm gonna have to replay this a little bit off screen because this is unacceptable. All right, everyone. So here we're at in 1968. I, at this point, I just got tired of this war. I I, I can't do it. I, I don't want to do it anymore, and I got tired of this just grinding. So I had to do some cons commands, and even then, like it was, it's just it's just not fun. This is just n not fun and extraordinarily grindy, and just not a good experience overall. But Nanjing is ours. Well, you had wandered around through the Changsha and Wuhan and Hankuo and all the cities in Hunan before, but the great city of Nanjing was far greater than any of these. One of the wide streets of the reclaimed Chinese capital is part of the army that liberated it. Bo Yi watched the ongoings with a combination of awe, amusement, and concern. He went when he saw the execu execution of collaborationist officers who had refused to surrender. Even from the distance at which he saw it, it was still a bad thing to see. Just as confusing was how the city and its people seemed to weep and cheer for the homecoming of the National Protection Army at the same time. Turning down a residential street, Bo Yi was accosted by a teary eyed young woman who handed him a beautiful fresh flower. He wondered what on earth it meant. He supposed it didn't matter, not as much as the fact that Nanjing was free, anyways. Rubble. Chandeliers were swinging and clattering to the sound of cannon and fire cl closing in upon him with every passing minute. Around him were the footsteps, the rustling of documents and luggages, and the walls of panicked shouts and the pleas, incessant effing pleas. Mr. President, please follow us and get the heck out of here, they screamed. Your livelihood is uh, our utmost concern. And live on, Mr. President, they screamed. Live on and our martial republic for the future to come. All Gao Zong Wu could offer them was a tired smirk. <clears throat> there was no Mr. President, there was no future. The Republic of China is dead, and uh, also honorable title might as well have never existed at all. For Dr. Sun Yat Sen's portrait, he stood, legs trembling, until dead silence descended upon the hall, he stood, until boundless anguish claimed him once more. He collapsed me first onto the vermilion carpet, as he'd done over and over again ever since he set his eyes on the Godforsaken Treaty so many years ago, only this time. Even his tear glance had failed him, for there was nothing left to weep for, only rubble and the corpse of China before his eyes. The Republic of China was dead, drowned in an ocean of her own blood, with her died everything he'd done for her future, her rejuvenation. The numbness almost swallowed Gao whole as he huddled up on the ground. Get the heck out of here. To where? Beijing? Xinjiang? Or to Tokyo? 
Levon, just to witness his hopeless earth plunge further into devastation, his right hand found its way to the metallic touch of his trusty Nambu, and instantly lucidity floated back to him. It was too late. The more fortunate ones had made their escape long ago. Two roads to Hecale before him. Uh, for Gal, there was only one left. Slowly, he uh, stood up, cast one last gaze upon Nanjing, and wrapped his right index finger around the trigger. Let those mules and sycophants run to the gates and beg for their lives. Let the savages outside have as many of their heads on their pike as they want, but they will not have them. I got tired of this. This is just not fun. It's just not fun. I can't do it, but... Total liberation. If a man does only what is required of him, he is a slave. If a man does more than what is required of him, he is a free man. We have gone beyond what was required. All the channels pulled together to go beyond what was required. Now we require more. As we ascended from the southwest, a great uprising of heroes and visionaries doing what needed to be done. So too must all of China must not rise up. In chaos and disarray and pain and disharmony, the people weep and gnash. The MPA's conquest has been painful, has been messy, has been ugly. So the way of all births. So now, now Long Yun must gather the desperate peoples of China and the marshal them into the one entity. Are they ready for liberation? Liberation more absolute than the world has ever seen before. Are they ready for total, all-devouring freedom? It does not matter. Mongol and Manchu still language between the Yamato. Until they're free, China still unchanged. I don't understand why. No, no one else rises up. Like, seriously, it doesn't make any sense at all. If you have to do something like this, something insane like this, you think you'd have more, like, support across all of China. You really think you would. And I don't understand how the heck this came about like this. What are... Why is it this so poorly made? Like this. What the heck? What? And we have nothing down here now? I and mean, I know this is all fanciful and like it would never happen because Japan's just too strong. I've also like because the war dragged on for so long. Um, Japan, Japan, China is in a fiscal crisis. They were losing stability every single week. So after that one, arise those who do not want to be slaves. Uh, one China against the enemy. A thousand hearts uh, united as one. Even today, the spirit of China remains in a dire state thanks to years of, after years of ceaseless manipulation by the pups in Nanjing. Demoralized, prone to sloth and indolence. Apathetic to the cause, worst of all, is disunited. Not merely between the warlords and the false government, but between neighborhoods, communities, and individuals. In Long Yun's inaugural address as the provisional leader of the recovered Republic of China, he made clear the national healing that is required. All children of China are one soul, one flesh. When my hand disobeys my will, it is a sickness, an injury. So is with China. When there is disobedience, there is sickness. When there is disagreement, there is injury. When we are made one, when we are united, China must heal in heart and mind, for she has many battles still to fight. Death of traitors, death of Japanese and them, long live China. Oh, not to Nanjing. The old capital, new, a new capital of China sits within a grasp. Captain Shu should deal a decisive blow to enemy morale while further elevating ours. Sure, why not? I don't think like it really matters at this point, so. Yeah, I can't do this. It's just, it's too difficult. Striking down the idols. The National Protection Army has just won a great triumph. Nanjing has been liberated, and the pitiful imitation of a KMT that a squad in its halls with Japanese backing was even now being removed with lock, stock, and barrel. Long Yun, Grand General for the National Protection, walked into the presidential palace, accompanied by the MPA Honor Guard. Zheng Zisheng and Yi Zhenying were some ill behind him, uh, leading Ill more troops, but for now, Long and his men were the only ones in the palace. Looking around at soldiers, Long issued a simple order Commit iconoclasm. Every single icon of treason you find, everything praising the degenerates Wang or Gao or anyone else, everything speaking about Pan Asianism, bring it outside so we can publicly destroy them in the sight of the people of Nanjing. The soldiers fanned out. I'm watching a sergeant about to smash a plaster of Wang Jing Wei. Long smirked and raised his voice again. If you decide to smash something, I have no complaint. I insist, however, that everything you do be done in an orderly fashion. We're reclaiming this palace in the name of whoever becomes the president of a republic after this is over. We're not torturing it as if it was Japanese pirates. Come again to rape and despoil Nanjing a second time, am I quite clear? A soldier shouted the agreement, yes, general. Why are we at peace with the... Why, why are we at peace? And what... Why? This makes literally no sense. What the heck? If anything, they should capitulate to us. Are you kidding me? Burning the remains. The soldiers have been told to get hold of as many RNG, ROC, paraphernalia in order to, in an orderly fashion as they could possibly could, and they took to task with their palm. Parts of the Wang Jing Wei, symbols of the old regime, and the old RNG's ROC pennants are thrown in front of the people of Nanjing. They watch no small amount of glee as the flames burn, and these reminders of the old era to ashes. As this happened, Long, Jun, Long Yun gave a speech saying, My people decades ago, the Japanese imperialist dudes came and raped this great city. Well, they'll care for the welfare of their alleged Asian brethren. They murdered and slaughtered as they pleased. So vile was the conduct that even the Nazi madmen of Germany visibly recoiled at their degeneracy. But that's not enough. They had Nanjing to a group of shameless collaborators and traitors who believed that they were somehow helping China modernize by brutalizing the countrymen and allowing the Japanese to exploit us. In any case, it matters not. For they are no more. We are the National Protection Army of the Republic of China have arrived, and we will protect the city. They will never fall again. They will never be raped by the Japanese pirates again. This I swear. The people applaud and crowd in wild approval. When is China die? I mean, I, this is. I don't like this. I don't like. I really don't like the way this has been set up. And why are we only, why are we not worth China still? Why? The reunion of brothers sometimes to take a city. 
Oh, from within does not need a Trojan horse. Sometimes all need takes is a man on the inside. Zhang Zuliang hasn't been anywhere except inside for years, and he was, he was her man. With a switch of a pen and the departure of letters, the secret army gave the MPA a very, very hearty welcome to the new city of Nanjing. The people rejoiced. There were flowers strewn about the streets, and the day was made beautiful. Long Yun and Zhang Zuliang were meeting for a tea ceremony. Da Hong Pao, Zhang Zhang said, sufficiently nice for such an occasion. Enjoy Nanjing, General Long. Long Yun sipped, it was good. The road's been long and filled with battle. Thank you for the hospitality. There were more diplomatic and brief niceties were disrupted upon the arrival of one Yang Hu Cheng, an old friend of Zhang's. The second their eyes met, Zhang sprang up to give him a deep embrace, years disappearing with every second of extended hug until what Zhang's eyes saw was a man with him at Jinan and no more. When he reunion passed and ne realized necessities dominated once more, Zhang turned back to Long. My request is simple, Zhang said. To allow me to serve, I will fight the National Protection Army and I will fight the Japanese again. I have the experience. Long Yun opened his mouth with a re reflective retort. Are you sure? And are you ready? But Zhang was not much deterred. Look at the books on the modern warfare in my home, he's related to. And see what I've spent those years in house arrest surrounded by. I know more than most, and I'll bring China with victory instead of defeat. And shook hands and knew what the future would hold. The defecation of the secret army along with the young marshal will greatly boost from Rock Up. I, I don't understand why China even has a, a, a secret army. It, why? In what world, why would they have a secret army at this point? Like, I don't know. The whole lore for this is just... I, I don't know. It's just... Hmm. I'm really questioning a lot of this now at this point. Another another Nanjing. The best offense. Uh, long ago, when the war was fresh and millions were we lost still walked the earth, their hopes that the Japanese might wage war were the honors they so prided themselves on. When they entered the gates of Nanjing on December 13, 1937, we learned the truth. Horror after horror flowed out of the cities on the rivers of blood that drained into the sea, only blew to corpses. And terror families humiliated, mutilated, and only gave them the mercy of death. Competitions to slaughter Chinese as if we were so much livestock. No, lower than livestock. Scene after scene of death, depravity, torture, the likes of which would derive anyone insane, but we do not have that luxury. Only we stand before the gates now. Every bullet we fire holds back the nightmare of another Nanjing. Every moment we spend fighting them on the battlefields, another horror spared from the civilians, those of them that remain. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I didn't enjoy this at all. <laughs> this type of campaign. And it wasn't fun. It was, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, it's fun and all, but like, why are we at peace with China? Why? How, do, how does that make any sense? Trump in the face of uncertainty. Having been fortunate enough to have been given command of the victorious parade, they now march to Nanjing. Sun Loren waved to cheering crowds made up of the long oppressed peoples of the city to come to greet their liberators. However, he cannot help but being troubled by the reason for this being in command of victory parade. Long Yun's advanced age began to catch up to him, and he had fallen ill. With Sun appointed as his replacement in the parade. They would not be able to keep the parade people from noticing the absence of the leader of the so far victorious anti Japanese insurrection, Sun. All hope that this would not diminish people's enthusiasm very much. This aside, the parade itself had become a tremendous organization success, with sections were reserved for the NPA, KMT, and even the communists, who had been welcomed by the bulk of the anti-Japanese movement. This even included the surprise of many, many KMT leaders, whose long-standing enmity with the Communist Party had not banished, but had been put aside in favor of the hatred for Japanese injustices that united them all. Some of the numbered among these leaders, for a while he possessed no love for the communists, he could still recognize that they possessed not the slightest amount of us righteous fury against Tokyo than he did. Despite all the success coming seemingly unendingly, Sun did not dare to let himself forget. They had dealt with the Han Jiang, but the invaders remained very much ready to strike back against the people they once exploited. They were ready for war. Sun could not let himself be any less prepared. He would maintain not only his own discipline, but that of all of China's soldiers, as he had always tried to do. He owed the people nothing less than helping them to do the very best. Anything else here? Secure Southern China? <sighs> Outburst. I, don't, I, I just don't understand why. Japan went to war. We, didn't even, we weren't even close to Nanjing, and yet they still try to kill us off. That's not fun. Where is the armory, Jiang said, his voice booming, echoing the warden's office. I will not ask again. The room was sparse, and the linoleum yellow wall caught the solitary neon lights glow outside through the window. The cliffs and hills of Xinjiang were sharp silhouettes against the stars. The look took almost a day. The breakout had been a success. Three other dozen prison guards who switched sides during the battle surrounded the two men. They had tied the warden to a chair earlier. Those who did not surrender, Jiang ordered them shot. Master Jiang, the warden said, his tone relaxed, mocking even. I told you this prison has no cache of arms other than he eyed Jiang's pistol. What do you have acquired for yourself? Jiang smirked, parrying the word smirk with his good humor. Warden who, with all due respect, you are in a precarious situation, the warden stayed silent. His eyes on the pistol, as a general of the National Revolutionary Army, I can put a good word for you. He flipped the gun in his hand, grasping it by the barrel, like a mallet. The Yunnanese army is not far. If you cooperate, he met you, whose eyes. He can still be spared. The warden spat in Zhang's face. As if by reflex, Zhang struck the warden with his pistol. The warden rose in his seat as if to gasp or to moan in pain. Zhang struck him again, feeling the shock of the blow in his arm. You insolent dog, he was shouting now. Where, crack, is, crack, the armory? Zhang stepped back, gasping for breath. Blood covered his face, the men pulled him back by the shoulders, a deafening silence filled the room, and a moment later a knock. Another prison guard pried the door open gingerly. His eyes met with Jiang's. Generally said, a messenger from the National Protection Army. Jiang kept his face in the hands and sighed deeply. I, all right, I need a moment. I need quite a moment. 
The way this is... Just, are we back at war? Who designed this? What the heck? No! Are you kidding me? Are we really back at war with these guys? Please don't tell me we're actually back at war with these guys. Oh my god. What type of design is this? At, at this point, I don't feel bad for using consequence. That's stupid. This is incredibly stupid how this has been set up. Incredibly stupid. The declaration. Nanjing had been reclaimed. It's time for the National Protection Army to free the rest of China. Before them, however, it was important for Long Union to declare his intent to the world here. So, flanked by many of his generals, the National Protection Army went to the best radio transmitter Nanjing and spoke. People of the Chinese nation and in the world, this is Long Yun, Grand Marshal for National Liberation for the Republic of China. Speaking tonight, I will make clear the resolution of the United Front to liberate China from its oppressors. The Japanese Empire is the latest most heinous in a series of foreign oppressors that have invaded our nation, and saving its people and profiteering unjustly off its resources. Today I declare that they shall come to an immediate end. We, the National Protection Army, do not plan to afford any further tolerance of the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere and its occupation of China's land. This radio st statement shall be construed as a declaration of war against the degenerate Japanese and the running dogs, which makes literally no sense because they already declared war upon us. To the various puppet nations enslaved to the Japanese yoke from India to Korea, I call upon you to th uh, join us Chinese in fighting against your foreign oppressors. Throw off the yoke of Pan-Asian Empire and march forward with, th with us in rejoining the community of free nations. For those Chinese living in lands still occupied by the Japanese and their oppressors, I call upon you to resist your enemy to the best of your ability. Do whatever you can to secure freedom for the Chinese nation as people. Do not be afraid of death if it will help the further cause of the Chinese freedom. Glory to free China, the long live freedom, death of Japanese imperialism, the die is cast. Great Asian War. Wh what? Oh, look at this. Two suns, one sky. This needs to be looked at again, man. What the heck? Never another Nanjing, of course. A great wall of flesh and blood. The Great Wall was a failure. It's a spectacular engineering masterpiece that shows the technological and visionary edge China once sell, but it was a failure. This was meant to keep out the northern barbarians, the Manchu and their kin out. It heralded a Manchu dynasty that made us weak and decadent, vulnerable to the influence and exploitation of the outsider. Their followers relying on stone. Stone cannot wail, cannot push itself beyond its limitations, it cannot strive or struggle. It sits inert and solace upon the earth. Fortification is a fool's errand, an ancient concept or concept. Modern problems require modern solutions. Flesh and blood will crush the invader. Garrisons, human ways, cities, and arms. The defenses of China will not rely on fallible stone earth, but on the unbreakable will and indomitable spirit of her people. Xi Nong returns to the most excellent General Long Yun, commander of the National Protection Army, for eternal greetings. The news of the return of the Japanese imperialist dudes to come through here to us here in Xinjiang. And I and those under me have only one answer to give. Ten years or more have passed since the most honorable Generalissimo, may he rest in peace, sent me to the Xinjiang region. In that time, I have the grim but honorable duty of accepting more and more refugees from the homeland who refuse to obey the demonic neocolonialist god king in Tokyo, his brutish emissaries, and the puppets of Nanjing. Our Xinjiang, as the general no doubt knows, as one of the last bastions of the old free China. But even as hope seems to die, even as the martyr blood of the generals Mao Qing and their soldiers mingled in the Great River, we never bend in the hope of one day returning to a free homeland. I am pleased to report that the eternal conflicts in Xinjiang have been silenced in the aftermath of your forces' liberation of Nanjing. All factions, KMT, CCP, the local minorities, recognize that it is time for us to honor the promise we once made to you. We have vowed to put aside any conflict and fight against a true enemy. Our forces, under my direction, direct leadership, are already heading east to fulfill a long dream, that of a Xinjiang and a China free from foreign oppression. I and my staff eagerly await the honor of meeting you in person, tr very truly yours, General Zheng Zhizhong. Military Governor Xinjiang. Welcome, brothers. Good to have you back. And the Third Son of Japanese War, which... Uh, this has been going on for years now. The Third Son of Japanese War has begun. And this time, Japan is backed by full mod of the co-prosperity sphere. We, on the other hand, do not even have the Western allies to back us. They've all been subjected to a, other powers and diverted their priorities elsewhere. Many in China believe that the situation looks desperate, though we are, they are wrong, and they cannot be faulted for their assessment. But it's folly for us to lose hope. Long Union is not, not alone. As a shameless subhuman mad Dong Tsushi has answered the Japanese imperialist call, the mock league is finally ready to fight alongside the liberators. The esteemed general Ma Zhi Yuan will have his revenge for his father, for his slain kinfolk, and for the nation. Alongside him is the son of the generalissimo Zheng Jingguo. Watching how the NPA fought for China's liberation in the spirit of the old front, all his doubts and disbelief have been cleared away, and he now agrees that it's time to join the front in their holy war of liberation. The mock league will no longer stay behind the plateau for survival. They'll fight for glory and freedom. 
Let's follow in the footsteps of the Japanese dog who pay for everything they've done. Legacy of the Maz and the Generalissimo will be reborn here. The world shall observe this Agora's return. One great enough to put Gu Xian and the Emperor Guang Guangwu to shame and pay China the honor it is due. For freedom and glory to the National Protection Army. And we're still pretty much doing the same thing we did earlier. Uh, they really baited down here, but I don't know. At this point, I didn't use any more consequence either between this fade in and fade out in the last one. So, other than that, I mean, it is what it is. This morale can go all the way up to, uh, to 90. Wait, morale cap is 90, but it's really 93. And then 80 and 80, so that's not bad. But I don't know. I'm disappointed in this. I really am. I, w I thought it was going to be a little, slightly better than this, you know, uh, in terms of just being able to force it. Force it. Literally force him to die. Uh, if you take this out, that'd be better. But welcome in the future. General Song and Li Jing Guo said, welcoming Song Zilian and Li Mi to his new residence in Nanjing. He stood in the doorway and arms outstretched in a show of generous hospitality. Welcome to Nanjing. I hope that you will excuse the temporary arrangements for this place. It's not been used very much or very often in the past. He waves him inside, past the foyer, into the main living room. Jing ordered the servant to prepare tea and snacks for the two generals. The room was well lit, with light bulbs mounted on chandeliers providing illumination. There were signs of work all over. The unfinished, torn-down plaster, the faint smell of wet concrete and paint, but it was comfortable enough for the three men. Once tea and snacks were served, the conversation that commenced was in classic Chinese fashion. Debating the finer points of Confucian doctrine, comparing comparisons, drawing comparisons between Prince Han Fei's doctrine and that of the old Moses, flowing out of the broad banks of modern politics, inevitably their attention turned to the communists and the dissidents. I admit, Lee said, putting his cup of tea down, China's changed so much, you're the communists, and now the dissidents around town. These people are so different from us. The old guards, I don't know how to outpraise them. What do you think of their spirits, Jiang said? The question was barbed in more ways than one. The old generalissimo was a staunch opponent of communism. <clears throat> Three men fell silent, sipping their tea in the awkward quiet. I think they have their hearts set in the right place, Song said, breaking the ice. I've never spoken too much to any of them, but I think that they're all right. Is that so, Jiang said, pouring more tea into his cup? He did not touch it, however. And so he looked at the two men. Whatever your opinions are, are required to cooperate with the new politicians and the communists. Lee rose to provide dissent, but the swift gesture of the hand extinguished that fire. For now, I'm not like my father. I know that for the liberation to be achieved, China must be united again. He looked into the eyes of each man. I trust you carry out this order. Both men nodded. Shadows of old China dance beyond the glow of hope. For the nation, would be good to do. Mm. Oh, because I didn't realize we were getting established control here. It would be really good. Find volunteers. Uh, seems okay. Yeah. Like I said earlier. Oh, well, that's really good to do as well. But, um, th this is, I don't say glitched or bugged, but, I don't know, it just needs to be looked at earlier. And I do apologize for being low rage. I was, I was just frustrated earlier. As maybe I should be, but the best defense. Our army did not win the Great Crusade by sitting on their hands and waiting for the enemy to come to them. We're not static, but dy by that, dynamic. The struggle thus far, needless to say, has been costly. Sacrifices have been made and valorous lives lost. We may have attained a periodic victory, but the strain on our psyche has been enormous. It is forgivable, then, that many in our ranks have succumbed to idleness. They do not believe they can make that final push. They want to go home. But know this, our home, our place of belonging, has been and still is truly free China. It remains ahead of us until we vanquish the Japanese men for good and all and reclaim the last of what is stolen from us. We're living in a house with three walls. Let's re-energize the men and send them out to spread the experience, the wisdom, express the spirit that China's soldiers will need to slay the beast in its den. Which, we've been kind of forced to for the last couple of years anyways, regardless. Y'all focus on this group and just kill them all off, that'll be good and we'll come back down here. Other than that, up here, I think we'll be doing okay, I don't know. It's, it's just frustrating. Just frustrating, that's all. Do you know? Because sometimes it can just be really frustrating. Oh, that's looking pretty good, though. So, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Go on in here, please. Please do. And then we'll head on down here, too. Oh, nice. Very good. 68, almost 69. Nice. More anti tank piercing and such, like that. Yes. Alright, so you guys come down here. Get a line. Other than that, I think we should do okay here. Up out a little bit. Ningbo would be great to get. Bahinia. So where will we go? Lam Kyo Kun turned around at Yoshiko's inquiry, only ever so slightly before turning his gaze back towards the glass panes. He stood among the clattering of papers and suitcases. Outside were the vandalized storefronts, the crumpled parcels scattered over the pavement, and the snake of cards and pedestrians united in their desperate screams for deliverance. Unlike during Yasude, Koshu had managed to not sell its set itself on fire this time, but it might as well have. It's a few more hours and all have been burned to the ground anyway. <clears throat> Nowhere, Lamb muttered, the Baohinya badge on his shoulder gleaming under sunlight. Go for patrol one last time, I suppose, to be honest, Miss Yasukawa. Wherever I go, I should be the least of your concerns, he smirked. It was you that absolutely have to get out of this echo, not me. Lives like mine are dispensable. Officer Hayashi. Now that's not simply true. Yoshiko's 
Yoshiko's hands froze. I can make a call right now about your association with our journal, and that'll be more than enough to secure your ticket. She stared at Lamb, nothing but pleading in her eyes. They'll hang you if you stay here, officer. They'll hang you for being a traitor and throw you in a ditch. Please, for your own sake, you have to leave. So I can be a second-class citizen in what, Taiwan? Lamb chuckled, extending Yoshihiko in, his in place. A Zujin life isn't worth crap any anywhere on the planet that isn't Guangdong, and you know as well as I. Not Japanese, hardly even Chinese, and a little effing nobody. I said Kareen carelessly toward the ceiling. A fleeting life on this fleeting earth. Chained to a fleeting nation that was never meant to be. Might as well keep it, way this, keep it this way till the end. Then Lam Q Kun turned around, and Yoshi Yoshiko saw a smile blossom across his face. But hey, if it makes you feel better, at least I could say, I'll die where I was born. Secure Southern China. With Nanjing under control, we shall drive out any remaining traders south of the Yangtze River. Uh, once we have established ourselves in the south, we can turn our attention towards crossing the great stream that divides the south and north. Oh, this is Secure Southern China and Parade or Paradise of the Parasites. Instead of Guangdong, is perhaps the greatest humiliation the Japanese dogs can ever place on us. Look at the land. The once of the birthplace of Chinese nationalism and the NRA itself has become the par paradise of the snobbish power and money, hunger, corporations, and opportunists, all obsessed with the pursuit of wealth. What's well, worse, the Japanese dogs have inve self invented this uh, BS Zujin as an attempt to destroy the self identity of the Guangdong people. All of our soldiers are furious to see what their sanctuary has become. They can't wait longer to free Guangdong from the parasites. <clears throat> nice. Riots in Huanan. How can there be not anything left? Exasperated cries of rage, desperation, and anger echoed throughout the uproarious. A crowd of civilians gathered in the middle of a public square, hands reaching out towards the officers standing atop the elevated platform. Liu Zi gripped his truncheon tightly, sweat dripping down his forearm, preparing to strike against anyone who tries to climb the wooden platform. It was not his fault that the officials in Kunming did not allocate enough rights for a distribution to Yue Yang, and yet he was facing all the perils, enmity, and consequences which it brought. He witnessed one of his colleagues being the outstretched hands of the hungry folk trying to cling on to the hemp sacks containing the precious rice meant to be spread out tomorrow. They cannot spare any more for today. You have more right there. Why are the effort you not handing it out? Another cry rang out from the raucous cowed, starting Liu Zi as he commanded the congregation to step back, being met by a flurry of insults and heated complaints. He wondered how the war was still being sustained while the tenuous food supply forced situations like this. Gosh darn it. People might just... Perhaps he could just give out a little more. Maybe it would calm the mob down enough to get them to disperse, maybe. His thoughts were abruptly interrupted when a shoe was pelted towards his direction, forcing him to quickly duck to avoid the impact. A maelstrom of indignation. Best defense, yeah, one more attack. Understanding warfare is not great. It's not bad, but Guangzhou recovered. All around him. The city burned. Burned, perhaps, was a bit of an understatement. Women, their faces paled and round. Lying puddles of loose jewelry and blood. Broken and crumpled parcels scattered the streets. Nobody remained of the illusion of paradise. None, none of it remained. As the National Protection Army marched through the streets of Guangzhou, adorned by the blue sky and the white sun banners once more. It wasn't what the city, what the very heartland of the first northern expedition so many years ago, meant to us that the men in the suits cared about. It was money. Always about money. All they cared about was money and material goods. To them, it did not matter who governed the citadels of opulence. It could be British, Japanese, German, who cares? As long as the shipments make up, of makeup and age scotch arrive, what difference did it make? When a bullet traveled down the main street, the civilized, profit-minded people revealed their true colors. They called Long Yun a savage. What nonsense. The real ruthless scourges of China reared their ugly heads when it became apparent they could not buy themselves out of the situation. The disgusting blob of white dresses and suits turned on themselves, scrambling to flee from the invasion. Long Yun is not the real savage. The savages are the ones trampling over their friends and partners, crushing their bones and bloodying their faces, all in the fruitless attempt to board the boat back to Japan. <clears throat> A clock to Guangdong will be attributed to Long Yun and his forces, but he knew the deaths here were not his doing. Guangdong belonged to China, as it always had been since an eternity ago. As corporate stated that the Japanese dogs concocted, the, this cold of the yen cannot survive, for once that illusion is shattered, their prim and proper upper class devolved back into the animals they were. Putrid, what a sickening display here. No restraints, eh. As much as I like more attack, I only one China against the enemy. What did China lose? It's a question for historians. When we ponder this question, many of us may jump to the practical and seemingly obvious conclusions. Logistics, technology, economics, however. Beyond the numbers and calculations, there is something far more apparent than the nature of China at the time. China and Liu's together. They lost divided and separated into swallowing pieces. China needs to be truly one country. Not a group of nations or a federation or a nation with regional autonomies, but a singular, solid, unitary nation. Workmen do not work together, cannot build a house. They must be of one mind, be one animal with many bodies. If we are to achieve victory, we cannot do with so many divides and petty altercations. We must be whole. Get down there, guys. It's fine. I don't want to say take your time, but because you can. But take your time. Oh, what else we have here? Oh, peace conference. It's 69, but is it Russia uniting? Oh! Oh, this guy's dead. Oh, that's great. Awesome, thank you. The Butcher of the Northwest, huh? Oh. Oh, this is glitched. Oh, hold on. Um, There you go. Butcher of the Northwest. Sushi Masanobu. 
A mass murder was praised by the Japanese dogs due to his war contributions in Southeast Asia, with a baton death march being his greatest achievement. Such a perfect match that he and his army gang share so much of the same rotten taste. We shouldn't disappoint them, but it is our ruthlessness we shall deliver soon. His war criminals will taste the most brutal defeat and demise that can ever manage to pay back what they've done to our land. After all, this is still nothing compared to what the Northwest people have suffered under the Japanese dogs. Reconquer Zibai? Zibai? Why not? Still attacked about two. You know what? We might just do that too. Let's get to where we need to go. And we're going together. That's kind of me doing. Hey, that's pretty good. Oh, wow. That GP ratio is really spiked up and our GDP really tanked, huh? Kind of sucks. Oh, well. It's just a little saw, that's all. Yeah, I just don't understand this. Kind of on a roll now, which is nice, but still. Can we maintain the Iberian Council? Alrighty. Go on in, and you know what? You're going to force the attack. Alright, you guys go here. It's fine, it's fine. Go there. Oh, are they pushing through here? Oh, shnikes. Um... Crap, they are pushing through here. That's not that's not good at all. That's so dumb. I don't like how this is set up at all, man. They don't tell you when things are happening and stuff like that, so. If that's a case, we're gonna go right here and deploy immediately. You three go right there. Just don't lose Kunming, we'll be fine, probably. And once these guys are all dead, we'll, we'll send some more guys that way, too. Because right, we're doing really well here, so which is good. Get that one China went against the enemy. Establish control. No one rules alone, not even a dictator. The great and glorious leader long union relies on lesser men and women to actually achieve his vision. Our people are given purpose by our efforts. This loyalty must be secured, whether it be with gold or passion words. Furthermore, expanding the small but dedicated bureaucratic core of the NPA will enable us to ensure things are actually working. Uh, as every emperor, native Mongol, Manchu, or even Japanese knows, China is a hard nation to rule. We need to do what is necessary, and long union can keep giving his speeches. Oh, good, you're actually there, thank God. I just want you to be there in time, that's all I wanted. Oh, did we lose the division? Oh, wow, yeah, we did. That sucks. Oh, well, there's LBJ. Well, as long as we keep pushing this way, too, which is actually looking... Northern China's looking really good now. Southern China, not so much. And I do want to attack Tibet, too, but we'll see. Okay, I have a lot of divisions down here, too. Getting here as well as it would be very good. Nice. Stop control. Oh, Treasure is the Yellow River? The Han Jian are retreating to the north. Our victory is near. We should push them over the va vaunted Yellow River and from there into the sea. Uh, old structures. Actually, how far are we for admin efficiency? Oh, we're nowhere near, so we should probably do all these. When you kill a wolf, you do not leave it to rot under the sun. You make, take its meat, its fur, its skull, a trophy. So with the wolves, we too shall not leave the carcass of the Han Jian state and the Japanese overlord to rot. Rather, we make use of it. Telegraph, telephone, railway, communication, control networks run like bleeding arteries through the broken countryside. Officers that once held corporate slave drivers or stooge politicians now fly the red and black sun of sorrow and rage. The Yuan buildings are no longer squabbling houses of empty promises, but are being heart of a single united nation. It's not a hypocrisy for us to use the same methods or even the same buildings as the previous regime. Rather, it's a form of sensible recycling. Very smart. Alright, you want to do that? Let's go. About ready to force the attack again. Nice. Yeah, don't get into it, guys. They definitely gave us more stuff here to use. We need way more arty now, right? No, actually looking okay now, huh? Well, that's the case. We can go a little lower then. They should be dying there, so let's see. Not bad so far. You? Oh, it's mine here. That's good. 
That's quite a few divisions here and there. Oh boy. I just don't understand how they can make so many tanks. It literally makes no sense to me. Just how? 2.3 billion is pretty nice. Hold. Hold and don't worry about attacking yet. Nice. I don't understand the screen that well. Oh, it's neutral. All these guys are all aligned, of course, which is good. Stabs controls always very good, too. Terrible, huh? Percentage, huh? Oh, I, oh! Change in reserves. Okay. Okay, well, I'll try it. Might as well. Huh. Saito. Jinan. Oh, we don't know Dali anymore. Yeah. Yuka. Very confusing screen. New management. A large organization Yi Tianren had ever run was the Kunming Aqua Antiquarium Society. Now, he was running the entire rail network in Wuhan. Truly, only the bright and dynamic leadership style of Long Yun could ensure his ascension. It's an absolute truth that in the times of desperation, the cream rises to the top. From unknown back rooms they come. From classrooms and satanic mills, by their dozens, by hundreds. People with skill, vision, dedication, tenacity, loyalty, and a thousand other virtues too esoteric and too essential to the name. Some cannot take the strain and break quickly. Some don't know how to play the game in despair, but a select few have taken what is to be great. Old China used to ex use, e use examination to force meritocracy. We have a more direct understanding of the term. The world is not merely upside down, it is spinning, but we can manage it, or rather, they can. The Cleansing of Northern China. Missive from the Grand Sen General for the National Protection to the People of Free China regarding the collapse of the North China Political Council, one Northern China, from the Yellow River to the Gla Gates of Beijing, as mostly liberated from the running dogs of Japanese imperialism that call themselves the Republic of China, too. Let me be clear. In defeating this usurpating government, we have thrown down the worst of the worst Hanjian ever born traitors that even the Mongol and Manchu invaders of the old empire would view as beneath the soles of their feet. These shameless of human scum are more shameless than even Wang, Gao, and his ilk. They willingly submitted to, to and cooperated with a demon emperor in Tokyo even before Wang did. Old, high, old habits clearly die hard. These worms ran to Japan's aid and usurped North China for the rising sun before we could liberate it first. Three, unfortunately, we cannot deliver justice to those of the NCPC that died of old age, such as Wang Kenmin and Wang Yatan, but the remnants shall have no such luck. They will be in prison for now and put in the public trial after the war ends. Those who suffered under their misrule will be allowed to watch the final fate of their oppressors, and we will make sure they are given the fullest justice we can meet out. Glory to free China, death to the traitors, glory, 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 and cross the Yangtze River. The great stream that divides northern and southern China has always been the downfall of many armies. For the sake of the nation, we cannot fail here. Like so many have done before us, all of China must be free. The traders fight with tooth and nail, but their days are numbered. Soon Beijing will be in our hands, which it already is. The last of the four capitals will be cleansed before China may be free of all poison. Foreign poison. The northern capital. Beijing, the last cancer's tumor of the collaborator Bly, has been liberated by the National Protection Army. The defense of geography of the city, which has protected it throughout the centuries, was no match for the modern power of our will. The walls fell one by one, the enemy lines collapsed one by one, the captured collaborators and soldiers in prison one by one. One by one, the cities have fallen. Until no more remain, the Republic of China is dust, armed dust, with a few divisions left, but dust nonetheless. The glorious days of liberation will soon be upon us. Marshal, Grand Marshal Long Yun said so himself in an inspiring emotional speech given from the ancient capital. We fought long and hard, and together we delivered justice to people suffering under those reorganized government Hanjians, but our journey is not yet over. The two loyal puppets of the Japanese dog, established by those traitors Asian Girog scums in the self proclaimed era of Genghis Khan, respectively, are standing right next to our door, and will soon accomplish what our predecessors have all failed the true restoration of the northern lands. March. Onwards. Got four divisions just kind of hanging out. They offer. To His Excellency Long Yun of the National Protection Army, greetings. The Empire of Japan has hitherto engaged in warfare against what it views as insurgents in the sovereign territory of the Republic of China. However, the war is not de developed necessarily to Japan's advantage. On diplomatic mission, now extends its greatest cordiality to the popular will of the Chinese people. The Prime Minister himself has sent his goodwill with his letter and hopes that the esteemed persons with whom this may concern would consider his gracious offer. I'm hating this right now with this. These people here. Oh, goodness. Uh, the Empire reiterates his desire for peace in Asia in accordance to the deal of pan Asian solidarity. <clears throat> uh, however, the war. Oh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah, if the Chinese government so wishes, cease fire talks and proceed immediately without delay. However, we are obligated to warn that the hitherto unrecognized government desires peace and must oblige Japan's interest in keeping unoccupied sovereign territories of Manchukuo, Ming Zheng, and Guangdong to the status quo antebellum. We'll update with the conclusion of the letter. The China and Japan can once again come into accord as in the days of governments past. The government of Japan has been generous to the extreme, and the foreign ministry hopes that the Japan's desire for peace is respected. Long Yun held the letter in his hands, fuming in anger. They swallowed their insults in cordial diction. And so the Chinese will to free herself from her enemies, yet if he refuses, there can be no turning back. War would decide if Japan and China stands in the continent. If we accept the support from the dissidents and military would melt away, the answer should be obvious yet. Perhaps we come to agreement while well, let's end this safely. Instead of losing everything against the sun, this will surely anger the populace and army? No, we're not bargaining with imperialist dogs. Pretty much, man, pretty much. The struggle continues with the steam Prime Minister of Japan. Salutations. Um, actually, what do I want to do next? Ooh, do we better planes? Yeah. <clears throat> the Chinese state offers it, it's sincere greetings with this letter. Having been notified of the Empire's goodwill that peace may resume in Asia, it is with deepest regret that the state must refuse the initial terms pursuant to a ceasefire agreement. The state believes that it is in the greatest interest to pursue its territorial claims, which the Empire had violated in the aftermath of 1931. Well, or that war, and thereafter in 1933, establishment of the illegitimate state of Manchukuo. Additionally, the state declares that it does not recognize the state of Guangdong nor the agreements that have brought it into existence. We recognize, however, that the Japanese government desires peace. In accordance with its wish, the state would offer ceasefire on its own terms. Japanese troops are to vacate the three eastern provinces and return to Guangdong and its cities back to the state. Islands such as Taiwan and Kui will also be subsequently turned over to the Chinese. Now, the government of Japan truly desires peace, and it must first return the spoils that looted from a weakened Chinese republic. Long Yun grasps the reply that his generals had written for him. He smiled. The Japanese will reject his offer, but that's what he wants. The world will continue to challenge Trump. Freedom or death. Planes, then. We're going to get to the sky. No matter what. They're not good planes, but they're god dang it, they're planes. Thank you for guarding Kunming for now. More production units, nice. Wow, this is getting extremely laggy. Actually. There you go, I've got to put that too. Go to gain our mission, legitimacy goes up more. Arise, those who do not want to be slaves. Prepare for the final conflict, for the whole world will be free. Japan has festered upon us too long. The peoples of China are screaming, crying, gnashing their teeth. They want the sweet release of war. They dream of marching across the scene and addressing the unequal trees that the Yamato hung about our necks as a slow noose. We'll set up recruiting stations all over the NPA's new territory. We only fear we won't be prepared for the millions who will surely want to sign up. But we don't really need this. An old anthem, huh? Oh, crap. They invaded here, too. Well, how am I supposed to do this? Like, bro, you know, that's the case. I'm going to take you. Uh, blah, blah, three, two. You know, I'll take you instead. You nine right here. You twelve, actually, go here. Now, you guys keep going in. I, I just don't think they can stop us up there. Over here, maybe. Over down here, maybe, but... Anywhere else? I don't think so. Maybe better radar, maybe? Up there, puppet allies will, uh, or just allies. Help us out with that stuff. Seven, seven. Attack right there, see what you can do. I hate that so much down there. But, we're gonna be. How strong is the state of Manchuria? Quite a few divisions, a million manpower, not that many stuff. They have 3,000 tanks. I don't understand how they can make so many tanks so often.
You attack us, you attack them straight back. Nice. Find volunteers and create volunteers. Yes, please. The call to arms resounded across the land, and hundreds live willing to flock to our banner. Hundreds, not thousands, and most certainly not the millions we need to hold back the collaborator armies as they surge forth across the front lines. We need more. More men, guns, and everything. But of these, the only resource we actually have a chance of obtaining is manpower. And there's so much that if it remains untapped, in the prisons, idling on farms, wasting away when they could be holding back this existential menace that bears down on our very doors. If they refuse to answer challenges desperate pleas of their own free will, we will spare them from being remembered as idle bystanders, collaborators of the nation's lost. To highly allow them to shirk their duty would be a worse violation of our responsibilities than to temporary rescinding their freedoms and allowing them to fight for their homeland or for their homes. It's so dumb. There goes those folks. Oh, give them that towel back. Give that towel back too. You know what? You go here too. You do that. Cut off that division. Kill them off. Thank God for Vietnam. We were to say. Don't let him move. The goal is complete encirclement. And death. Scum suckers. That is who and what they are. Force it. A new old anthem. Both is propaganda can inspire the masses. Speech can rouse them, but the music reaches into their souls. It molds and twists their emotions and beliefs. It can turn the innocent child into a killer and the vicious murder into a priest. Long Yun had selected an anthem for the National Protection Army in Azu, China. March of the Volunteers was composed in 1934 by Tian Han for a movie about resistance against the Japanese occupation of Manchuria. The song quickly surged in popularity among loyalists during the Japanese invasion, the inspiring tune extols the justice of armed violent resistance and the unity of the Chinese people. The new anthem will serve to invigorate the nation and the army. With burning spirit and prize, we march ever onwards towards the final victory. March on, march on, march, march, march. Hey, look at that. You're encircled? Oh, no. Who gives a crap about you? Nobody. This is going to suck here, but really, I'm just buying time for up here. We've almost reached Port Arthur. They have a, they still have so many goddamn divisions. Holy crap. Oh, did you win already? Oh, no. Hunan's got to be ours. And we're not going to stop the attacks. you got to get all those divisions in there. Nice. Good job, guys. Do like an ice cream cone or something. Oh, hello. We can give, we can get, oh, you can give us your stuff? Yeah, that'd be nice. We'll see. I'll get you an ice cream cone. Hey, better research facility. Remember that? Please go ahead. Outdated research facilities. All right, all right. Do they not have like guns or anything? They might not actually. Yeah, you know what? That's okay with me. Good. Twenty-five divisions there, huh? They're not enough dead yet. I want more. All right, what do we have? The the fake golden family. Them Chug Dong Grub, the self-proclaimed descendant of the great Genghis Khan, is nothing more than a pitiful puppet figurehead of the Mingxiang government. How ironic does he call himself to serve for the good of all Mongolians, when he allows himself to be subjugated under the boots of the Emperor Puyi, becoming a puppet for a Japan, Japan puppet. It's time for us to end this sarcastic drama, and the Mongolians shall realize it's the MPA who actually cares about their freedom and dignity instead of the disgraceful prince. What's the point? Yes, yeah. That's not making sense, man. It's fine. Keep going for now. Literally kill them all off. And then we'll focus on this area next, because they are starting to spread out very thinly and be very difficult for them to actually win here, so... Go there. Oh yeah, well, this is connected all the way to Japan. I forgot, I forgot about that. All the way, no stops. Get on the stick. 
Uh, the people of China are drifting in the great river of history. Let them throw them a line. So many people have been displaced from their homes, great tents, cities spring up and around military bases and urban centers. Hearts bleed for them. The Han Jian left tens of thousands of good Chinese people to suffer homeless on the streets. We weep for those forgotten by the old regime. Wretched and old, shall, new shall both be saved. We shall save them. They should be given barracks to live in, rations to eat, uniforms to cover their nakedness. Their children will be taken to well-funding housing. And we'll look after them. The folks who do refuse to acknowledge our authority on our charity will receive what they wish. Nothing. So aid they are receiving will be cut, including the rights of protection by the police and army. If they choose to reject the rule, then, you know, so be it. So, flip and be it. Oh. These guys aren't great, but, you know, they'll do. Uh, I'll send you this front for now. Fine volunteers. Well, there were a few. A few hundred here, a few thousand there. It wasn't exactly overwhelming, but... Those we find are indeed. That we have are indeed. <clears throat> They're fine indeed. Their eyes burn with fury, bonfires reflecting the will of the nation. We'll put them in our finest uniforms, give them our most modern weapons, and send them back. With well, the bellies full and over stuffed walls, so they will be, show the benefits of volunteering. We'll also bring these soldiers into bars, eateries, brothels, temples, and schools. We'll agitate the people into a fervor with our campaign of enticement. Nice people in here. Great. Because now I'm going to focus down here and then just shove them out of China once again. Oh, where are they having their divisions? Did they leave already? Oh, how sad. Nice. Keep going, keep going. Nice. Go. Oh, popped them off, huh? We need a little bit more fuel, too. I still want to talk to Bet, though. Probably looking quite a bit better. National Zeal. We received 108 complaints from officers, uh, an auspicious number. Each one's about the new recruits. We're expecting them to be shaky, awkward, and nervous. All soldiers, all new soldiers are. But that isn't the problem. It's their enthusiasm. They have too much. Officers can't get them to stop shouting national slogans. Targets made to look like Japanese soldiers get torn to shreds before we can get our money's worth. The soldiers stay up late at night trading stories about how many traitors they supposedly fought during the campaign. Obviously, this is good. It just isn't great. They need to actually learn things. We need to fight as well as they should. First traders. Quiet and quaint is Mongolia, an old empire revered and, uh, and feared amongst the Middle East states of Europe and Asia. A Mongol conquest seemed like an inevitability. Either you die at the hands of Temujin, or you die for him. All until the Mongols hit a stopping point. <clears throat> On the shores of Japan, the conquest stopped by divine intervention. Japan has always had the upper hand over Mongolia. Japan is the king of Asia, and Dem Dongrub, loyal dog he is, sat at the top of the king. A lap of the king. Kings come and go, and hounds shrivel and die without their masters. Mongolia was usually quaint and quiet, but the roar of stampeding vehicles accompanied by the far-off bangs of automatic rifle fire disturbed the sleepy kingdom. The Crown Prince already fled back to Japan when the National Protection Army began their long march northward. Long Yun's presence was not required in Mongolia. The first orders were plain and simple. Show the world the fate of the first traitors. Run, dog, with tail between your legs. They offer. Oh, greetings. The Empire of Japan has hesitated to engage in warfare with views as insurgents. Um, I think it's number four. Yeah. Um, uh, I, if you want to read the top part here, please go ahead. Uh, the Empire reiterates its desire for peace in Asia. Uh, in accordance to the deal of Pan-Asian Solidarity, the Chinese government still wishes ceasefire talks could proceed immediately without delay. However, we're obligated to warn that the hitherto unrecognized government desires peace and must oblige Japan's interest in keeping unoccupied sovereign territories of Manchu, Kuomeng, Jiang, Guangdong to the status quo antebellum. Hope that with the conclusion of this letter, that China and Japan would once again come into court as in the days of government's past. The government of Japan has been generous to the extreme, and the foreign ministry hopes that Japan's desire of peace is respected. Long Yun held the letter in his hands, fuming in anger. Let's swallow the insults and cordial addiction. Okay, let's this again. They insult China's will to free itself from our enemies, yet if he refuses, there can be no turning back. War would decide if Japan or China stands on the continent. If he accepts, he'll support from the dissonance and the military melts away. That should obviously be... No. No, I guess I maybe read all that before, but whatever. Then unending northern expedition. Huh? Good thing. Go. We can. Really concentrate them in the south. There's a green okay here, too. Wow, that's a lot of manpower. Oh, no, we're trying. We're going to do this one. For the people. To put the world in order, we must first put the nation in order to put 
And to put the nation in order, we must first put the family in order. The ancient and wise sayings of Confucius and his school of thought remain relevant to this very day. We as people, as human beings, naturally gravitate towards compassion and care for our loved ones, for it's both human nature and the way of our ancestors. The concept of family is perhaps teetered to us the closest, the folks you are willing to protect with your life to fight tooth and nail for. These emotions, often present within our population, are the things we should utilize to bolster our forces. Who in China would want to see their own parents or siblings die at the hands of the enemy? Not me. No, that just popped a green. That's nice. How much money are things we're losing? Oh wow! So here's Chengde, of course. Wuhan. So more admin efficiency gives us way more stuff. Well, be nice. Reintegration process. Oh. Oh well, yeah. Fine. I don't really care too much. Admin stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I think it gives a road. Why not? Oh, wow, that really helps us out. Okay, so maybe. Yeah, I don't understand this at all. It just it looks so flippin' complicated. But I, I don't want to touch it because it's so it looks so complicated. That's why I don't want like to touch it. Why are they gonna make it so complex, man? For the people. Our mission? <clears throat> for the peasant who has had his harvest. Requisitioned by armed man for the farmer whose animals were shot in his own field for food. For the mother whose sons were made to join the army by recruiters who came inside her own home. For all these people, the, only one man links all their separate tragedies. The figure of Long Yun hangs like a shadow over dozens of empty villages. It was never the enemy. It was not Long Yun who massacred the sons of China and their thousands as they bravely fought and perished on the battlefields. It was the Han Jian, the traitors, servants, and lapdogs of a foreign presence who fought not for themselves or the families but for the rich parasites who sat far away in the lap of comfort in Tokyo. We will march forward united. We are willing to forgive. All we ask for is the people to remember the true enemy, to stand against Japanese imperialism as one. Oh, more divisions. Nice. Nine, nine, nine. Oh, 20 combo with. Interesting. There you go. He's doing great. Go straight into here. Kill them all off. Force it. Force them to die. Every last one of them. I don't know why I went that direction. And they invaded again. God dang it. Well, I and mean, all that does is just kill off their own army, so... I'm not sure they really thought through that one very well, but obviously they didn't. <sighs> Got a big old cup of coffee here. All right, and expert's good. A lot of visions we just cannot convert, which is disappointing to see. But whatever. You're level nine on Empu. I'm sorry, Yang. As much as I want to use you, dude, level 9 is too good to pass up. We'll come, we'll come back to you later. You're looking pretty good. Wait, we can't go to Korea? Why can't, why can't we go to Korea? Amur, huh? Nice. That's almost 1970. Just going to get some more research stuff. Why not? Might as well. Oh, look at that. Nice. How many more divisions they got? They can't have that many more. 84? After we killed off all these people? Emphasize national unity is next. Revolution and fervor serve taking the minds of our people. They wave flags and banners. They chant slogans. This would be good news, but the slogans they chant are not the ones we told them to chant. The banners they fly are not always ours. If these folk are not traitors or enemies, they are our countrymen, but they yearn for the lofty ideals of liberty, democracy, and equality. They must learn that at times. We must put off ideals and our desires for what must be accomplished in the present. We must campaign with more subtlety. Not perpetually targeted at stamping out the Yamato with fury and fire, but on gently guiding the people towards proper values. Defined by us, of course. How much manpower does Siam have, basically? We got a lot. Not a lot of equipment, though. Zang's been wounded. Doing fine ish. Well, fine ish here. 
course it. Screw these guys. I don't care. You die, they die, they should all die in the end. And we're forcing it so you can attack here too, ding dongs. They chose this life. We're just fulfilling it for them. Nice. It costs money. What is this one? Uh, okay. I just want to get more admin stuff, that's all. Where's this one? Militarization? It's fine. Nice. Cool. How are we doing? Yeah, we're still doing very well here. Ignorance and strength. Long Union is a liberator. Long Union will destroy the collaborators. Long Union will conquer the rising sun. Perhaps paper pamphlets litter the street. Foreign propaganda tap wounds whenever the wind picks up. Allies and half truths take physical form in simple catch slogans. Words carry the soul of the nation through the eyes of the heart, bypassing the brain entirely. Long held opinions are long swept aside by simple phrases that hold infinite meaning. The collaborators have renounced their humanity. The Japanese were never human in the first place. Every proud citizen of the new China has at long last found truth. That's a beautiful thing. The destruction of words. Eliminate treason. The green of sand irritates the, boot, the foot, the foot, more than the boulder. We are not surrounded by Hanjian, no matter what Long Union insists, but they are out there. Terrorists, conspirators, traitors, some are ideological, dedicated to the red flag or the blue-white sun. Some are loyal to Japan, our truest foes. The most dangerous of people have no high-minded goal. They just hold a burning hatred for us over and our leader. Our units are being extended and given as broad civilian legal powers. More importantly, they are being trained. The loyal and skilled in detective work will be united into special police force. The last vestiges of civilian treason will be terminated. No matter what happens, terminate with extreme prejudice. Okay, we got a lot of things here. Could use them, but I don't really want you. No nukes here for now. I don't understand why we can't go into to Korea. It doesn't make any sense. If, if Japan, if we uh, actually go to war with Japan and do this well, it literally makes no sense why we wouldn't just go straight into do this. But then again, this is TNO, and something just really don't make any sense. And that's okay sometimes with me. Oh, what's over here? Reconquer Huanan. 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 Nice. Huanan. Oh, no restraint. Might as well. Despite our best efforts of fighting men of Long Union's army, great army still somewhat, we shall we say, indifferent to the second stage of a great struggle. They are certainly aware that the Japanese beast needs to be put down. That the rising sun must be drowned in the blood of martyrs, and the cursed isles must be banished to the Stygian depths from whence they came, but their hearts aren't quite in it. There's always a possibility of less might less high-minded motivations, all things considered. We show a considerable restraint in our liberation of China from Hanjian rule, and our soldiers come from the poorest and most destitute backgrounds in the entirety of the nation. If we promise them two things, the wealth of Japan in their pockets, and the blood of the Japanese on their hands, they may be keen to see battle undertaken. Long Yun does not need a nose, but let him, let him think his speeches are all his men need, but we know that men cannot live on ideology alone. Which is very true. There you go. I just hate that we cannot convert these divisions. These are not bad. They're just bodies. They're literally just bodies. Did Japan invade again? No? Okay. That's good. Double up for now. Oh, the life stock would be nice to get. Not bad. Going up by 5.7 every month. Come on, let's go in. That's so stupid. No, not that one. No friends. What was this one? The unending North Expedition with a forbidden city back in our hands. Here it comes with greatest challenge, Venturio. Fallen to the Japanese dog since the Mukden incident is now plagued by those traitors of the Asian Giro clan, who welcome the likes of the Kwantung army and the Japan bureaucrats to enslave our people under the so called Manchu quote. That's nothing but an artificial puppet state. This time the Japanese dogs will of the luck of the Mukden incident, will accomplish what the NRAs failed decades ago and shall never never shall Manchuria suffer from the Japan imperialists again. Sure, why not? Nice. 
Got a lot of political power, too. For the nation. What is a nation? It's land. More land than any country bar center Russia. It's people. More people than any other nation in the history of your earth. It's history. Venerable and grand. Stretching for uncountable millennia. When a nation is great, its land is great, its people are great, its history is great. China was no longer great. To the hundreds of millions that inhabit this nation. China is more than people's soil and books. It is a spirit so powerful that it rolls down like flood water from a celestial mountaintop. We do not need to be great. We need to be China. Our fight, our efforts, our armies are forces of incredible might and strength that could triumph over any formidable foe. May we march forward towards the future, however uncertain it may be for our nation. Oh, Japan's saying what you do with them? Well, huh. It's nice. Hey, that's a lot. Our GDP, 1%. Nice. What are we going to do this? 2.4 billion? We max it out. Oh, is that. Oh, that's as high as it can go. Oh, holy crap. Whoa, I did not realize. Oh, okay. Wow. That is something. You have a little more time, though. We'll do it probably general attack here and there. Oh, actually, you guys can probably do it right now. I'm gonna go all the way through if you can. So, when do they give up? Why do I set it up like this? Did I not just click this? I did. The game likes so hard sometimes, man. It's so bad. No restraints. No mercy. Repair what you can. The enemy left a treasure of behind. It left materials of industry and materials of war and greater quantities than we could ever have reasonably produced by ourselves. Tanks, guns, factories, all just lying about. They thought they had disabled them, leaving us useless scraps, but their national progress protection army as nothing if not resourceful or just repair it all it doesn't have to be good just good enough they look upon their drugs with regret and contempt and we'll show them the error of their ways didn't think i'd actually try to i mean i did use consequence don't get me wrong oh can we go in now oh yes please but yeah oh maybe not god are you kidding me what a bunch of bs that's so stupid ha air ben oh but i didn't think with this campaign we'd end up paying up pretty much all the debt so yeah Oh god, what? No, you stupid idiot. Oh, it's me. Got a lot of divisions here. Not really winning a lot of in the places. Some of these places that we are. Burma, though, is. Eh, they're doing okay. They got a lot. No, like, well. They're probably doing a lot worse than us, actually. The Golden Cup shattered. A part of the general staff of the National Protection Army. Subject, the reclamation of the Northeast, once called Manchukuo. One, the northeast of China. As we now be known for alternative, instead of the foreign construct of Manchuria, has now been completely uh, reclaimed in the name of the National Protection Army. More literate members of our corps of soldiers and, sol and officers have reflected on the significance of today's events. After all, Manchuria was the first Chinese region to fall under the control of the Japanese. It was the beginning of the worst era of this century of humiliation. And to taking is no doubt a great source of great elite to the general to the people of China. Two, resistance in Tsing. Tsing King, a capital of the false great Manchurian Empire, what a ridiculous delusional name that is, has been effectively quelled. The vast majority of people, even the non-Han people such as the Habin Russians and Chao Xing Xu, have welcomed us as liberators. Small wonder that given the utterly artificial and oppressive nature of the Manchurian squatter state into the Northeast, the author of this report took great pleasure in watching the panic of Gu Si Hang, uh, the Asian Guro clan, and their assorted sycophants. Their reaction, although completely unworthy even of a modicum of sympathy, is understandable. After all, history is repeating itself. Unlike in the 1910s, however, they all have nowhere to run this time. For those in the Manchurian government that we have managed to get hold of have been arrested and now are being taken south. Uh, to San Trao, we wait for the instructions from the military administration of the Northeast. Glory, 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 and reconquer Dong Bai. Still want to attack Tibet. <clears throat> you know what? Screw it. Do it anyways. Can we call all of our allies in too? Do they actually join these guys? No. And it is done. The bugles finally fall silent. The Empire of Japan, its final act of desperation, is offered surrender. Today, the tyrant finally cowers before the lands of peoples they had trampled on for decades for too long. The terms are simple. Japan has accepted total defeat, abolished every fraudulently treaty signed under the Wang Jingwei regime, as well as completely and unconditionally returned sovereignty to all Chinese territory currently under national protection army control. We have earned China her long-lost freedom with her blood and flesh. Today, at long last, peace back to her, and there's no more reason for us to reject it. Yet, already. Other voices are bubbling within our ranks. 
The offer made no mention of the Maguan Treaty, nor did it concern the concoctions of other imperialists behind our backs. The islands of Taiwan and Kuye still lie in Japanese clutches, and claiming victory right now will make them remain so for the foreseeable future. China has still clamors for justice, just that we woefully cannot serve in full. Truth is, our naval force stands practically non-existent, let alone comparable to the, to the juggernauts of the Imperial Japanese Navy. The people will understand our choice, just as we have understood their, our hearts. There's one more option. Cross the Yalu River, march into the Korean Peninsula, and demand from the tyrant everything is robbed from us. That, however, will provoke its final wrath. A wrath so great, that, so all-encompassing. It would very well plunge the rest of this earth into eternal fire and darnation in its wake. Will it be worth it? We've done enough. The hollow threats of the Japanese devils will not stop or just revenge. Why can we not invade Korea? I don't understand that. That's so stupid. Any damage you take, I mean, that we can replace. Any damage they take cannot be replaced. 0.4 billion. Jesus Christ. That is so good. The resolution. Here. Admin stuff. 100% recruit. There you go. 100% recruit. 100% recruit. That's right, 100%. Nice. Get a rug. Uh, today, the curtain has finally fallen upon the Great Asian War. With a significant fanfare, the more significant tense of the representatives from both sides, the Way Highway Accords, as of 1969, August 14th, has been signed into effect. Uh, as commenting the Republic of China's triumph over the Empire of Japan, the formal secession of all hostilities and the new status quo that's dawned upon East Asia. The Way Highway Accords owes its name to the, to the ill fated port at the tip of the Shandong province. Once the base of the Qing Dynasty's Bai Yang Fleet, then the site of the last major naval battle of the First Sino Japanese War, heralding the Asian Japanese dominion over China. That was the last till this very day. No, this has more fitting than Wing Highway, then, as a testament to this reversal of fates. The China has risen and bowed triumphant over her erstwhile overlords. Of course, itself largely follows Tokyo's prior proposal along the one additional clause. The lions of Taiwan and Kuhi are hereby nominally restored under Chinese governance, under the condition that the formal transfer procedures be temporarily postponed until the establishment of pertinent institutions. As both parties are fully aware, however, this article is nothing more than a concession for hawkish elements within the NPA. To China's lackluster naval power, and for Japan, to China's restored mind and sovereignty. For now, however, peace will suffice. The road to a strong and modernized navy will be fraught with hardships, especially when the reborn China has barely stepped off her cradle, but we shall overcome, as we have so valiantly done for the sake of our own liberation. Only then shall China be reunified, whole and truly free again. We've done the miracle that the northern expedition succeeds, and China is, for the first time since the Opium War, liberated from imperialism. Whoa. Whoa. That's really cool. Whoa. I don't even want to see what they are. Oh, we can't even delete those guys. Oh, how does that affect the economy, though? A little bit more debt. Oh, yeah, we're down there, too. Well, we deserve to be down there. I don't know what they did to us. Piece of doo-doo. Actually, aren't we still awarded to bet? We should be... Oh, we didn't get to bet? Are you kidding me, bro? A lot of divisions for that. Um, time to go on, I guess. Any other focus tree? Kong Jin? Bosco ride for freedom. Well, Hang had never expected it, that it would happen. He had willingly, willingly gone when they had conscripted him. But he had no illusions. He was fully expecting that he and his brother and everyone else in the NPA would die within the Japanese and the Nanjing trails crushed him, but yet that was not what happened. Uh, somehow, perhaps because the Long Yun had the favor of some god or another, or maybe Khan's commands, maybe Guan Di had personally intervened, China was free from Kunming to Chang Chong Chun and beyond. The Japanese had been humiliated, their will to imperialism broken for all eternity. Now, Hang's job, one he took with aplomb, was to announce the glorious news to as many villages and houses as he could find. Taking a bicycle that his brother deceased from a dead Japanese soldier, Hang went out of the wildest bicycle ride in his life. Riding through villages and localities that had been ignored by Nanjing for decades, he shouted the glorious news, the news of a hope against hope, the news of the end of the century of humiliation. By order of General Long Yun, zero people, O oh people of China, awaken. The white sun on a blue sky flies over all of China. The century of humiliation is over, we are free. As people processed with what they were hearing, Hang's knapsack became heavy with gifts and food. His stomach became just as full. At one village, he gave him another knapsack, which was also bursting at the seams by the time he came back to base. He also had a cramp from bicycling on his bloated stomach. Yeah, that'll do it to you. Still fair rating. Still not bad. Prepare what you can. Last days of the warlord. 
As a cloudy day in Xiaotong, the child at home of Lu Han and Long Yun. Two Jones walked through the door. Uh, through the streets, really, actually, only stopping to admire the snow capped mountains in the distance. The moment it was interrupted. By a violent coughing fit as Long Yun stumbled towards the bench, Lu Han rushed to assist him. Are you right, my cousin? Should I call for a doc? No, Han, just get let an old man catch his breath. Han watched Yun struggle to breathe and felt shame. In contrast to his vocal support towards the reorganized government in Japanese, his cousin had never given up on free China despite his reluctance abdication. And now that China's free, fate would take Yun before he could see the China he built. I'm sorry, Yun, I wasn't strong enough and I betrayed her people. I don't deserve forgiveness. Yun looked towards his cousin with a puzzled look before releasing a weak laugh that became a cough when his throat finally cleared it, he responded. You did what you thought was best for Yun on my behalf. Despite all your faults, you did realize that in your heart that what you were doing wasn't the right path. That's why I'll live on as long as I must to prove that you have contributed just as much to our final victory to drop all charges against you. Barked Yun before succumbing to another coughing fit. Han looked down towards him appreciatively, but the girl still wore heavy on his soul. Han looked away, and the two cousins sat in silence as it began to rain in Xiaotong. Just like rain, the tears flow freely. And salvage what is left. There's a school which contains more wisdom than any of the old masters. It teaches a unique sort of wisdom, and it does so quickly. The school of poverty has many pupils, but few graduates. It teaches the folly of want, of wishing for something better, not for us as perfection we make do and mend. Black powder explosives killed just as surely as they did centuries ago, and are easier to make than a modern grenade. A scrap metal railway line will not survive a hundred trips, but it will get the train where it needs to go. Bet sheets cut into tunics make a poor uniform, but it keeps the cold out. How fortunate that we were to have an enemy so rich that they think of us in dire straits. They would not know dire straits if they crawled up their bloated stomachs and choked on them. We'll teach them, and they will learn. The breath of spring. It was sunset in Xiaotong. Long Yun lay on what was to become his deathbed. His repentant cousin, Lu Han, sat anxiously beside him. Since the government and civil society had last pledged and shrined in law that Han had served time and been pardoned for his crimes, would be spared any further punishment. Yun no longer wanted to put any more effort into keeping himself alive, so he let his, the illness have its way with him. Yun coughed, his blood sprayed all over the sheets. The tuberculosis had developed into a terminal, inoperable stage. Han fussed about desperately until Yun raised a hand. There's one way you can help me right now, my cousin. How so? Give me a sheet of paper, some inks, a brush, and then go to sleep. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Han got up and tripped over his feet to get the supplies from a drawer. Handing them to his cousin, Han felt a terrible feeling of finality and hugged Yun tightly, tears streaming from his eyes. Thank you, cousin. Thank you for everything. For being with me, for proving me wrong, for giving me, for freeing China. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yun summoned with little strength he had to put his errant cousin on the back. It was an honor and a pleasure, my cousin. It's all forgiven now. Go to bed and I will see you. Han smiled through his tears, despite that it took him several more minutes to compose himself and go to his room. All the better, Han would later say, that he had said goodnight in that way. The next morning, the guards and Han found Long Yun, first president of the Third Chinese Republic and Grand General of the National Liberation, dead in his bed. The blood on the sheets was dry, and the brush of ink were neatly placed on the low stool Han had sat on. Yun held the paper Han had given him in his hands on it. It was written, The winds of spring once again breathe on the Shanghai gates. And Russia's still killing itself. The EuroLeague won? I guess that's right, yeah, Walmart. Okay. Weird campaign. Very weird campaign. This is the first time I've ever seen the Euro League win. Oh. Freedom wanes. How the distance support of the civilian government that Long Unit had established? It would probably have been enough to hold China together at last. The civilian government did not have their backing, and it was quite clear that they could not hold on to power. Worse yet, to satisfaction with the relatively unsatisfactory way the war had ended further destabilized affairs. As a result, within weeks of Long Yun's death, after it became clear that the civilian government was soon to collapse, a council of generals, not at least among these generals, Song Zilian, and the other KMT members, seized control of the government. The result was a military junta. Most freedoms were suppressed, and the people that descended from the junta's line could be subjected to harassment or worse. Many people did not know what to make of this new development. To their mind, the future a fate of China, which it seemed so clear while Long Yun was in charge, was now blurry. Though China had been victorious, and the officers of the victorious junta had in fact led China to that victory, a military junta had never been an ideal or permanent way to rule. Two people watching the situation play out it was a repeat of the rule of the martyr Chiang Kai-shek. But Chiang at least had the support of many civilian KMT institutions. The new, new junta, on the other hand, had been forced to trudge along a familiar road without knowing the lay of the land. The dangers lay ahead. The military governments and the free people of China had to be prepared to face it. Whether they would be prepared, however, was a story for another time. Oh, is that it? Okay. Back to the warlord age, huh? Is that really it? My goodness. Death of President Ho Chi Minh, huh? Well, we made it. God dang, fighting the Japanese. Is, I think it needs to be redone again, probably. It needs to be looked at again, in my honest opinion. I mean, I want it to be... I don't know. Just, it's difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. Don't get me wrong. It's supposed to be difficult. But, like, bro. It was a pain in the buttocks, I'd say. So, 
On that, we didn't get finished all these, but burn what is lost. The war has torn apart the land with incredible savagery, where once we could repair and refit, now only the possibility is left up to tear down and rebuild from the ground up. For many, the act of creating factories and workshops could produce an industry that was, was in itself an unsurpassable effort. It took us a blood, sweat, and tears and hundreds of men to reach where we are, and now the same temples of human resilience lie bombed and blackened, utterly unusable. Some of them even became symbols for the entire villages or towns. Their own contribution to the war effort, a standing sign of their determination to win, but now we must take them down and build anew. If we're trying to move forward, we cannot remain rude in the days of our past successes. For the country. A country is all of all things of all is a thing of all its own. A country is a nation state, consistently reinvented by the science of government and the artistry of leadership. It is a republic common with the collective rather than the individual they absolute to serve the country's specific duty of privilege or blessing. The men and women who do, who do serve, who are willing to sacrifice themselves for the country, men and the country, are the two embodiments of modern China. Look at that economy, man. Six point two billion. That's the most we can spend. Oh boy. Six point two billion surplus, not bad. And no debt basically basically no debt. The growth is not bad. We are all military directed. You going to put that place go ahead? Nice. To core population is what? Not even a billion. 730 billion, basically. That's not bad, still. Yeah, it's definitely a campaign, though. Definitely a campaign. Ooh. I mean, it would be better if Japan was actually under us, but I'm not too concerned about it. I mean, I wish we could go to war with them, but we can't. But whatever. I just can imagine them with us and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Signs of the times. The rain comes and falls. Today, the rain is different. The metal fire scre uh, screams to the earth, chewing through crops, homes, and flesh. Rivers splash, rivers spill. Today, the rivers are different. Lead pepper bodies float in the red, cloudy waters. Trees will sway and trees bend. Today, the trees are different. Black ashen skeletons crumble and snap into dust. China lives and China endures. Today, China is different. Scarred land and burning cities do not dot the barren of war torn landscape. China bleeds and for China. Brothers and sisters, children of China, I speak to you today from the steps of Sun Yat-sen's mausoleum. He was a visionary, a father to our nation. He is a man unparalleled in the history of China until now. I'm not talking about me, I'm, I'm just a servant. I'm talking about you, the individuals who make this nation great, the lifeblood of the cause of liberation. Today we fulfill his vision. We exact the price of freedom, justice, and the three principles. We march beneath the black and red sun of the National Protection Army. Think of what, what that means. We took down the Hanjun. We wage war against Yuan Shikai, and today we shall wage war against Puyi. We are the defenders of China. A hero is someone who is willing to risk one's life for the good of all, and all of you are heroes. We must fight. Modify by getting way more surrender limit, more max war support, and max division organization defense and attack. Reintegration process by 5% every week. So, Hey, no more debt. And let's just finish that last focus first. It ain't much, but it's honest investing. Ikeda Masanosuke. How popular are these guys now that they lost a war? It doesn't collapse anything else, and we don't own Taiwan, but still. I can't believe I made this like basically a two hour video. Holy crap. Rikes stacked. Rikes stacked. Rikes packed. Borman's here. Ah, Macmillan. LBJ. Alright, cool. Just, yeah, that's not bad. Time stack hikes. I don't see the point of that now. Since we paid off all the debt, so. National Liberation Front it was fun. It was difficult. I wouldn't really recommend it because it's so difficult. And it's a little broken when Japan attacks before we take Nanjing, which I think they should really. Eh, I mean, it made sense why they did that, but still. A lot of repairs and roads and stuff like that here. They yeah, build, build a lot of railroads that don't make any sense. I at least want to finish the last focus before we sign off, so. But if you're still watching, I appreciate it. Two hours of video? If you're still watching, that's awesome, man. I appreciate it a whole bunch. There you go, build a lot of roads. 55 production units. Never enough production units compared to the energy we have. Or the grid power, I should say. Hmm. I'm in the southwest still. Repair focus for now still, which really hurts us quite badly, actually. Road to Prosperity is pretty nice. Eugene on unification was pretty pretty bad. I would never take that again. But the Burma Road revived as well. It was pretty awesome. But on that, I don't think that's going to be it for me. This campaign was definitely a campaign. One to remember for a long time. But if you enjoyed it, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.